Good evening, Free Enterprise 2. Uh, Free Enterprise primetime match here tonight uh, between in the between Martin Broadcloak and Night Duke. Uh, I'm Stoppable Force, and here in the booth with me tonight is John Burkhead. John, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Uh, this is the Group 16, Stoppable. And uh, as, of course, you know, and I'm sure many of our listeners know, this is a growing community filled with wonderful players. So just the fact that we are now in the final 16 basically means we are all but guaranteed to have fantastic gameplay. And with Martin and I do, that is certainly no exception. Yep, we've, uh, we are, we'll definitely be seeing a lot of this seed tonight. I see a lot of key items. They're not necessarily a lot on the moon. Uh, and uh, very strong competitors tonight. Martin known for being almost extraordinarily lucky. And uh, Night Douche is a really, really solid competitor, too. So uh, we got, we got skills on both sides here. Uh, what are your thoughts on a starting Sid? So normally I love a starting Sid. He's got high levels. Uh, if you find Cursed Ring, you have your anchor, and then you're good to go for a while. Um, with C Neki, it's a little less ideal, although with a T Pro setting, um, Sid's best weapon usually ends up being some kind of bow. So you might be able to get a lot of utility on him. This might be an excellent starting character for both of our runners, given the flags that we have. I agree. I'm always happy to see a Sid. And this is really one of the two spots I want to see him if I'm going to see him early game is here or uh, joining our hero in the uh, in the throne room. And I uh, just want to give a shout out here too before we get started to the behind the scenes crew, uh, S. Grunt rolling the seed and uh, Sheep Launcher pushing the buttons to make them light up when our runners complete these objectives get these uh, key items and inevitably somebody wins their first uh, of three matches. Uh, yep, absolutely. We do have a wonderful restream team here. I'll look at these objectives. I'm seeing a few things that would make me happy. Uh, required music means I have to go check it so I don't have to really worry about it too much. Same thing with Required Cave Bahamut and uh, Trading Away the Pinktail means that at some point you are guaranteed an adamant, which uh, given the uh, T-Pro setting it hasn't been as often coming out of Cave Evelyn or some of our other checks. So I look at these objectives, and I'm actually feeling pretty good about this tonight. Yeah, it's it's always nice to know that you're going to get that little power spike at some point, and uh, that hook that you'll need for the pink tail is also a twofer since we have launched the Falcon up top. Doesn't necessarily uh, guarantee they'll have to go that way to get underground, but uh, it does mean uh, could be uh, pulling double duty tonight as a key item. It's always interesting to see launch the Falcon because you almost, almost wish that you won't find the Magnet Key so you might have efficient routing. But we all know that you can have a very rude boss at that uh, root canting spot, whether it's a, a root turtle or a Vigan CPU or something along those lines. Yeah, Dark Knight Sauce is always a fun one to see down there too. Yeah. Uh, looks like our runners are off. Ooh. Not Ooh. bad. We got the we got the brains and the brawn here with Tella and Sid. We get that pink hail, pink tail just handed to us by the Mist Dragon. That's a that's a fun start. That adamant might be coming in sooner rather than later. Yep, our runners could find that hook pretty quickly and have that adamant armor available to the seed. Although there is an interesting glitch with it and. Uh, carried over from the vanilla game where it will leave you weak to a couple of elements if you take it off of someone. But uh, sometimes worth it to switch it around to more powerful party members as they come in. Uh, we'll have to see if that comes into play for our runners. You know, for all we know, the hook is buried somewhere on the moon and they may not get that till the very end. <laughs> that sounds right. Uh, we've definitely had some rather rude seeds that have been rolled. Martin going straight to Troy. We have a media divergence. Uh, Martin going to Troy to get the free item, whereas Night Dew is peeking Baron in pretty early, where he finds, I'm sure, to his complete disappointment in Edward. Yeah, and Edward guarded by some flavor of Mylon, and he just leaves them there. Um, meanwhile, uh, Eddie hands Sid a coffin. Um, thanks, Eddie. Not a key item. <laughs> I feel but, like that has some kind of symbolic meaning, you know? Like, here's the best I can do. It's just a little bit of death. All I've got for you is this nice pine box. Sorry, Sid. Uh, Martin taking the time now to loot the public treasury while Night Dew going through the uh, lottery pass for some So, a nice bit of util utility early on is the fact that Tella has exit, which is probably prompting Night Dew's decision to go ahead and go to water pass as he can exit out. 
finding crystal armor, which while we don't have Cecil is largely pointless. It is not completely pointless because uh, that sells for a lot even on S quarter. With these flags, money is going to be hard to come by, so that might be extremely handy for him. Yeah, that is one nice thing to uh, go ahead and uh, know in the back of your head is if you find any of these like, these exclusive Cecil armors, you just go ahead and sell them for money, and they're not going to you know completely fund your seed like they could before, but uh, they're they're no small chunk of change. Uh, yeah, Martin, Martin it, following on that, you see this now. Yeah, it's and we got a little, little high five going here as I do goes back to Troy. It's weird to find a crystal sword and think, oh, good, money. I mean, what else are you going to do when they give it to a fat Chocobo to establish dominance? I mean, you know, what we do on our weekends is our business. You I mean, Edge can't even dart it, so it's, it's a the whole thing. Uh, be interesting to see where our runners go next. Uh, the crisscross is complete, so we'll see if they do any additional looting. Maybe they're going to bring up the hovercraft, maybe go to Antline or Hobbs to see the character. Yeah, and we, uh, looks like Martin's just going to do some additional looting in the back of Watery Pass now that, I mean, not a bad idea since he has Tella for that exit. Finds a dancing dagger. Could be good if we find someone early on with that. Um, also, we joke about the coffin, but there are a few bosses where being able to just kill one non boss fit enemy right off the bat could actually be really useful for these runners. Absolutely. And if they happen to find a siren uh, early on and get underground access relatively early, that's 34,000 XP and a way to automatically take out the egg. So it definitely has utility. I just am allowing my own disdain for the character of Edward to come through. My apologies to the entire free enterprise community. <laughs> I'm sure we all accept and or agree. Uh, Martin takes the time to do a little more looting here. Uh, not satisfied yet. Find looting Damsian finds a Gungnir spear. Not bad. Finds an Earth Hammer for Sid. That's pretty nice. That Earth Hammer and yeah. Charm Rod combination is really nice, especially that Earth Hammer uh, early on, and that Ogre Axe, and the Ninja Hatch. Wow, Damsian with the goods today. So, there is no back row glitch on, um, but they've picked up enough armor that putting Sid in the front um, for these early checks, I think he's meaty enough to go ahead and tank a lot of damage, and uh, Martin's in very good shape. Yeah, Sid's kind of a big beefy boy. He can take it. Knight do finding a Porum on Mount Hobbs. Nice to see an actual white mage. And just a Dark Knight Cecil guarding him. So, if nothing else, Sid can absolutely tank these. Uh, looks like only Porum is even going to go down here. I, I believe that they start with a few Cure 2, so I'd be surprised if he doesn't go ahead and bring her back, which it looks like she's going, he's going to. So, again, we talked earlier about the fact that they can have an, a potential anchor with Sid early on. Um... You want to have a white mage uh, early and often. Uh, I found that with these flags, Blink and Berserk has been incredibly handy. Uh, Tella starts with Blink, and to have two white mages, even one of them is Tella, uh, gives a lot of versatility and a lot of ability to go ahead and get through these uh, early checks. Yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's not a lot on the overworld that's going to be too threatening with this party. And uh, over on Martin's side, apparently we also missed a bandana somewhere, so his front row Sid is now tricked out, ready to deal some damage. Uh, looks like he's going to be heading up to pick up his form. That dude looting the backside of Mount Hobbs here, finding diamond armor, drains sword, a rune ring, which is really nice. Everybody and an Odin there does. Yeah, you never know. We might see Odin. Yeah. It's interesting that Naidu has all of his characters currently in the back, uh, which didn't affect the DKC fight at all, obviously, uh, whereas Martin has put his uh, Sid in the front. It'll be interesting to see if that's a change that gets made as uh, time goes on, or if that costs uh, Knight do a few rounds with some of these early checks. Uh, as we both know, some of these races can come down to just seconds, so even just a few additional turns can be a huge difference. That's very true. Uh, Martin, unfortunately, given, dropping a cure two on his form, but then she ends up flat on the ground anyway. Oops. He probably did it for the memes. Probably perfectly kind yeah, of Possible Orpheus here. Yeah, it's Notorious Porum disliker, Possible Orpheus. Yeah. Although, uh, Porum, Porum early game, you know, she learns Blink and Berserk faster than Rose does. So finding a Porum this early is, I, I would dare say, and be blasphemous to say, it's actually better than finding Rosa early on. Yep, and if you have her and not a Tella, she will learn an exit without needing to go through Zot, another advantage she has over Rosa. I am perfectly fine with the Porum early. It's her... Her late game HP pool that gets a little questionable. Uh, Hello, Heroin Rogue. That is a very nice pull in a chest that does not necessarily often get checked. Um, if oh. Morton does not check that, that could be a, a 
significant, significant uh, game changer here early on. Yeah, poor him even showing up with an archer bow. She's she's ready to she's ready to uh, be a physical DPS for a little while. A little miniature Very angry, angry child. Yeah, this game like has some of the deadliest children per capita of any JRPG. <laughs> Uh, Martin does not uh, check all of that, so Martin does not. So Martin's got the Earth Hammer, whereas Forum has the Heron Robe uh, from one side to the other. Um, it'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting to see uh, how that all pans out here. Yep. And, uh, Karate Man at the bottom of the Atlantic Cave. Not not threatening here at all. Um, we don't even need to worry about the fact that we don't have Cecil to shortcut his script. We should get through his little little pool of HP here and uh, see what our first key ever check that's us. Well, first outside of. Uh, so and there's the Baron key, so this was required. It was required. Uh, I'm a little surprised Martin used a big bomb there. Usually those are really nice to use for, um, you know, AOE. You find, uh, you know, we have that Mylon. We know we have some brand of Mylon at the beginning. It could be Mylon and Friends or, um, you know, get dolls early on. Um, those J items have more utility early on, so using it early makes sense. Uh, I'm just a little surprised that it was used at that particular moment, but uh, Martin definitely knows what he's doing, so um, we got through the fight quickly, and uh, the decision that he made. It's true, I'm not going to question it. There's a reason I'm not in the, I don't know, the round of 16. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I do usually... I, I love hanging on the vine for the alt gauntlet, too, if they like to show up somewhere obnoxious. Like, uh, I had a... I was running into a, a, a bad stretch of alt gauntlet at the back attack spot on Mount Ordeals. All those zombies just getting a mandatory turn for I was incorrect about the Mylon. I had the color right, but this is a Leviathan here, Baron. Yep, it's the, uh, the the second spot here is what can be a little bit tricky. I'm assuming that Nightdu is trying to go ahead and um, have some efficient routing here, um, because uh, he might be looking to liberate Baron Castle uh, immediately, right away, uh, as Martin picks up an Elven Bow on his side, uh, and we'll be doing the defense. There's all four elements hanging out the... Uh... Hanging out at the table behind Edward, just jumping out. Surprise! Uh, interesting spot to find them in. It is. Uh, and speaking of that, that coffin, uh, Martin, uh, uh, Martin with the utility, going to use uh, Earth Hammer as a weapon, which uh, does cast Quake on a weaker level, but it should be enough to go ahead and take out the soldiers. Not a ton of XP. Oh, he is going to go ahead and use the coffin. Not enough. He'll get those out of the way very quickly. Uh, Night Dude, managing to get through the elements. Not too, not, not too difficult for him. Gets the other tail. Gets the rat tail. Still no way to drop him off yet, but... You have to wonder if uh, getting rat, t rat tail early means that the hook is nearby. If, if that's the way that the, the seed is kind of working out here. But there's no way to know for sure. Not until we see some more checks. Just the sand ruby from Fabul. So that does open up another character. No Sid, no Fu, but maybe still worth checking at this point in the match. I would check for sure. Um, you want to, you know, you want to get your your party set as soon as possible with a early uh, with an early Tella and Martin took the time to go ahead and find that there are Ether twos over at Fabul. I would be very surprised to not see a D machine at some point in the near future, even though there is no um, giant that's required. Um, meanwhile, Night Dew, with his heroin robe for him, uh, using the Baron Key to open up the shop, has found a Samurai Bow. So that forum is ready to hit all of the things. That looks like what the thing that she's going to hit next will be whoever's on the throne of Baron Castle. Might do heading in to try and liberate it right now. Martin doing a little shopping here in Kaipo along with his check. Finds more room rings and more bandanas if he needs them. Looks like that was a hard reset out of the shop, which does save a few seconds, and as we talked about, every second matters, especially with this competition, and especially at this point in the competition. Yeah, these uh, these matches aren't really decided by minutes, but sometimes. Martin, uh, going to check his favorite Chocobo Forest here, where he occasionally spikes something unreal, like a cursed ring, just to cure three day. Sorry, Martin. Uh, uh, I, I, I cure three... <laughs> might pay some massive dividends, so we're going to call Martin a man of the people, uh, as I'm sure he'll appreciate it when he watches this back. Um, looking more than likely to get his Tella online before taking on uh, Baron Inn and Baron Castle, whereas Night Dew is very close to finding out what flavor of Mylon he will be dealing with. Yeah, we've got a... Uh, first, we're going to get through the D-Mist waiting outside. That oh, that's right. The, Excuse uh, me. Well, yeah. 
My apologies. Sorry, that was uh, me. I, I had my eleven on the brain when I saw Leviathan. I just saw purple. Ooh, Martin finding our first lunar sparkle in the match. A lot of, a lot of things here that it could be, but nothing really threatening in the first spot. Just the D-Lunars here. He's gonna use that cure three? Oh, oh just a Grimoire. That big bomb would be handed right about now, I'm just saying. Ooh, Grimoire slots Odin. Odin says, nope. Those are bosses. So clearly not trying to go ahead and attack them uh, directly. Going with the Lit Bolt, which is a smart move because it is an HP-based item. Um, it's a little bit of an awkward spot here. It's a, it's a, a little bit rude. Um, there's no aim with Rosa. There's no power with Sid. There's no jump with Kane. There's really no way to completely, you know, not cheese it, but uh, get out, you know, to avoid starting the script of all the viruses. Um, yeah, and I'm running targeting. through a lot of cure twos here. Yeah, he does seem to be targeting one. Oh, there, there it is. <laughs> See, calculated. There goes that cure three. <laughs> there we go. Around Night Dew's side, also popping a grim war against the Mist Dragon, also whiffing. <laughs> But uh, is through the uh, the Mist Dragon in the lobby, and we'll see who's on the throne. Uh, right, right for a little loot. And ooh, doing some looting in the basement. This is pretty heads up. It's pretty, you know we're only 13 minutes in. Um, there's a higher tier of loot down here at the basement, so hope we find some goodies. Uh, those charm arrows with that forum, uh, not too bad. Uh, as Martin finds Antlion vacationing away from his home on the moon still being high up on a mountain over here at Ordeals. This is a little awkward. Yeah, uh, this is, um, because you don't really have a good way to avoid the counters here. The, you know, Sid doesn't have an alternative to just attack. Uh, and the punches are fairly tough here, so you're just gonna kind of have to heal through it and, uh, probably let Sid do the bulk of the work here with his hammer. The decision to go ahead and, uh, burn his... Bacchus. We know that uh, with launching the Falcon, we definitely have to go to Eblin. Um, Bacchus is one of those tier 5 items that is guaranteed in several of the gated shops. So, if I'm him, I'm thinking, I have to launch the Falcon, I'm going to be underground, I'm going to be on the moon. Um, there's a high probability that I'll be able to find Bacchus once somewhere else. So let me just go ahead and use this now, and uh, he gets through it very, very, very quickly. Yeah, very good, uh, very good use of resources, knowing you'll probably be able to dig up more later, and entirely a possibility that we won't actually end up with more than one Berserker in this party near the end, anyway. Uh, Throne of Baron occupied by, by six dolls. Which, when you think about it in any kind of real-life fashion, is horrifying, frankly. <laughs> six dolls in a trench coat. Uh, I did not vote for that. That can and, uh... <laughs> become a matter doll and lead a group of terror among people. Yeah, there are some interesting tricks that uh, could make it easier, but our party does not really have access to them on Nightdew's side because Nightdew has not been to ordeals. Uh, toting the back three notably keeps them from being able to turn into uh, the giant doll. Ooh, Martin finding a free boss on that ordeal is not where you want to find King Queen that one. Not so much, but as we talked about it at the top, um, that cursed ring, uh, if I had to guess, that means that Sin is probably here to stay, uh, depending on the characters and gear that he finds. Uh, speaking of characters, uh, Night Dew finding Edge. Um, so if he can find some equipment for him, um, that'll be in very good shape. Even even in some shops, he did find that crystal armor earlier. Wow, that is that is bleak. That is oh yikes. <laughs> uh, that is, like I know it's it's free enterprise after hours, but man, that is dark. Said the two statues of people laid out. Eddie with the Eddie in bed handing out coffins is just thrilled and doesn't know why. I mean, even when the twins did it, they didn't look like that. Good lord. No, and finds the magma key of her liberating her castle. Well, we are headed underground. Uh, those are three gated shops where they might be able to find some pretty good gear. Um, is that three thunderclaws? Uh, yes, three thunderclaws, two mute knives, two middle swords, a bandana. Yeah, we've, we've got some stuff for this edge. And a partridge and a pear tree. That is uh, a little bit excessive. Oh, so we have Martin with his Tela online, more than likely heading over to uh, Baron Castle to go ahead and uh, follow up with what Night Dew just did. Uh, so Night Dew does not have his Tela online, but Night Dew is heading underground as Martin goes to 
get the lovely news that it's Eddie, and then more than likely go ahead and finish up uh, Liberate Baron Castle. Night Dude did not check the, the Baron basement. Um, it's not necessarily required, and it's not an objective. Um, so maybe just thinking, I'll be back on the overworld at some point. If I need to check, I'll go ahead and do so. Yeah, possibly just assuming that whatever is down there is not something he feels comfortable tackling with this, tackling with this party at this level. I can't really blame him. Unless, uh, unless it's something that turns up down there that you can take care of that cough with that coffin from Edward, uh, it could be pretty rough to get the spot. Very true. But um, even then, I feel like the the one coffinable boss they've already had at the pool of defense. Um, his Baron guards are still two. Um, they haven't found any hourglasses yet or other ways to go ahead and cheese, so it's probably a, a very good uh, use of time. Yeah, you're the, with that one one boss out of the pool that you know you can use it on, you're really, your, your odds of finding something like the other guards of the Dark Amps are even lower. And whatever you do find there is going to be pretty punchy. Yeah. So that Earth Hammer doing quite a bit of work. Um, uh, Martin is through Baron and Night Dew finds a longsword, um, but is kind of whiffing on the shops here. Dwarf Castle. I'll be curious to see if he goes to fight the boss or if he's just shopping. And it looks like he is just shopping. There we go. Probably off to Tomra for a continued shopping trip. To talk to uh, a certain job dwarf. Speaking of uh, being a man of the people, it's entirely possible. If if I'm him, I'm looking. I'm looking for ninja swords. I'm looking for a full moon. I'm I'm looking for for stuff for my ninja. Yeah, full moon would be great. A even a second long sword finds those boxes. Those boxes in Tomra, so can load up on more of those now if necessary. And since he's emptying his inventory, it looks like he's going to. Martin buying five mute bells. You have to wonder if that is uh, getting ready for Baron guards. If that is maybe doing a warlock grind, which we don't often see. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, what he does with all that. I do finding a cursed ring in the Tom Restore Room. That's a really nice pickup there. Your anchor situation is now pretty much solved. Uh, yep. The, uh, he'll also, he will eventually go ahead and get his uh, cursed ring from uh, Ordeals as well, but he doesn't have it yet. And as he's heading down, and saving here maybe means he's going to do a little bit of looting. There is the one warrior chest, which he's certainly not really in position to go ahead and uh, take on here. Yeah, without something like in with a, like an RA1 Palum casting Quake here, it would be pretty tricky to get through them at this level, but uh, hope, probably hoping to at least uh, check out the rest of the chests, maybe find the trap chest early, and then reset out of it here. Um, yeah, there, there's definitely been a lot more... Is that a fourth Thunderclaw? It's a fourth Thunderclaw. <laughs> Jeez. Um, there's a, I've noticed a lot more looting on these flags um, with, the, with the Cell Quarter and... Um, you know, if you're looking at a ninja that requires a lot of money to go ahead and equip them accordingly, um, it's a pretty heads-up play to keep looking for things. Yeah, I think it's kind of a double, kind of a double whammy because of the flag set. For one thing, like with the big spikes in power, you can get from the available T seven T eight items in uh, the uh, group stages. It was pretty easy to hit a power level, a power level fairly early where you could just quit looting, and also there was a lot of money because we weren't on a sub quarter. And oftentimes you were hitting trap chests to try and power up that uh, Cecil that you knew was probably waiting somewhere in the wings. There's no Cecil here, and your best character is probably going to be an equivalent hungry ninja. Uh, so, you got to keep looking for things for him. Might be finds that package in the freebie chest in the thing arch, and Hourglass 2 is for sale in the store. That's a really nice time. Yep, uh, the Hourglasses have a, a tremendous amount of utility, whether it's with uh, bosses that don't have the boss bit, excuse me, for uh, any kind of grind. Uh, sometimes if you find uh, the gauntlet at a very rude spot, those gauntlets, those uh, hourglasses can be a lifesaver. So picking up a four pack, finding a tiara and a dwarf axe. Um, that dwarf axe combined with the curse ring can help to make Sid even slower. Um, so uh, definitely pick up some, some good loot here. I'm just going to find out who his required green spot is. It's Octoman. Hmm. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, that's that's gonna be a very very fast Octoman. Although he does have 37 um, Thunderclaws that he can go ahead and equip. 
so that will help. Um, but you have to imagine there might be a little bit of a grind that happens there first. Yeah, he'll have to see if he can somehow tie a Thunderclaw to Forum's arrows, because <laughs> <laughs> he's got so many, he can just put them on everyone. Although you, you bring up a good point, um, if, if he does find some lit arrows, um, you know, that, that Forum is, is, is going to hit things. That's true. It that can definitely be RA1 compared with, uh, you know, you put the cursor on Tella and throw him in the center. You'll be using him largely for blinks on more than cures. Uh, setting up the Sheila one check here by talking to Yang in bed. Hi Yang, bye Yang, and that dude is out of the self cave. Possibly, uh, possibly done underground right now. Yep, going to head back up, maybe check Sheila, follow your freeze. And see where that leads. If I'm Night Dew, I'm probably uh, doing Sheila 1 and then probably going on board deals to go ahead and get Tella online and then try to make some, uh, some decisions. It's worth noting that we did not find Sockets in any of our underground shops. So if Moon Access is gated um, by underground bosses, they're going to have some decisions to make. Do you try to go after some of the required bosses in the Fey March, which is going to be tricky to put it mildly? Um, do you go to Keyless Tower, which is never a lot of fun? Do you try to go out and take, take on Dwarf? Um, they have some decisions to make. So the next five to ten minutes are going to be very interesting to see. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm definitely hoping that uh, Sheila has something pivotal here, otherwise we're going to be looking at some tricky decisions. Uh, looks like our uh, tracker sheep launcher is looking for a Keyless Tower play. I have to admit, I do like when I do find it extremely entertaining when Keyless Tower is the play, but I also understand why anyone would not want to do it. It's a long run up for potentially nothing. I loathe Keyless Tower. Keyless Tower is the Edward of checks for me, um, but it's uh, less than ideal. So Martin, uh, Martin is checking the basement. Uh, did Martin save? Uh, I, I hope so. Days. Save, save your game, Martin. I'm, I'm going to assume he saved outside and I just didn't see it because I was watching Nate do talk to Sheila. I'm going to assume so as well. And finds an Artie Bow. Well, that's great for Porum for right now. Uh, for Martin, that might be great on a Sid. But that is not the forward progress Nate do was probably hoping for. So now he has to go uh, decide which underground boss he wants to tackle, essentially. <laughs> Yep, and with we know that that is Ruby and not Elements. While uh, we do have an Ice Claw, I believe on both sides. Um, oh no, Martin doesn't have, doesn't have the Ice Claw yet. I think that was found in the Tomra Treasury. Uh, the magic at that Odin spot is incredibly high, and those retaliatory Fire 2s are going to do a lot of damage. So that is not exactly the boss that you're looking to find down there. Not ideal. Martin does find an Ice Claw for sale in Agar, so he at least picks one up. Uh, we'll get one away. We'll probably get another one for free shortly. And finds cat star veils and lifes and camping gear all in the Agar item shop. What a nice, again, a really nice pull. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good shop right there. That's, um, you know, and I don't know about you, but I know that when I'm running seeds, sometimes I, I have a hard time remembering, like, oh, uh, wait, where, where was that? What shop was that? You know, 12 shops to choose from. So, kind of remembering that this particular item shop is stacked with, with goodies uh, might make it easier to go ahead and uh, come back here should they need any of the goods. Yeah, it's definitely probably one of those situations uh, at this level where you just want to buy them, buy them when you see them and then not come back. Uh, I do, looks like heading up ordeals, seeing if that's where the forward progress is hiding. Uh, Pops a Grimoire, and we actually see Grimoire finally go off, getting this dragon on the D-Leaders, and then Flame from Edge easily handles those D-Leaders. Edge's Nijutsu magic does not get nearly enough love, especially in the early game. It is fantastically powerful. Even Flood and Blitz, which you don't see very often, um, just by the fact that you know, normally he'll be zerking at that point, or you have to go ahead and go through the hook route uh, to get to it, is quite powerful, so it has a, a tremendous amount of utility. Um, Martin is parked outside of Dwarf Castle. Doesn't appear to be terribly anchored. Not sure if he's shopping or if he's going in or both, as Night Dew is probably quite quickly going to be able to go ahead and disperse with this antline between Edge and a very, very, very angry form. 
yeah, they are slicing and dicing this antlion. Martin did save just outside the door, so maybe just resetting if the shops are that bad, or maybe hoping to peek the boss at the very least. We shall see. Uh, night do with a nice little celebration. It's a weird way to celebrate for Sid, isn't it? A, <laughs> just a little bit. Just flashing okay. them pearly whites. <laughs> I mean, good for him and his dentist, quite frankly. His age. Maybe they're not real? Well, uh, but let's see what Martin does here. Martin... Nope. Martin's going to continue shopping. Probably has a similar uh, viewpoint as Knight do earlier. I have an edge. I need equipment for my edge. I have three gated shops down here. Let me find some goodies. Knight do arriving in the mirror room on Mount Ordeals. Getting, I believe this was a curse train. Yes, uh, getting a curse train and uh, give the bad news that King Queen Evelyn are here today. Well, the real key item all along is getting Tella online. Um, that will uh, help out uh, quite a bit. It's not a, it's not, it's not a terrible party, but again, the lack of being able to grind this early on, um, as the options are dwindling for our runners, I think is is the challenging part. So Tella's utility, um, both as an anchor uh, as well as uh, with uh, with spells, is going to be really significant because if you don't have a lot of DPS right now. You're gonna to want to turn Sid loose, whether it's with the you know the ogre axe, with the arty bow, with the earth hammer, whatever it might be. You need to do some damage. If they're gonna to go to dwarf. That's eight thousand uh, hit points to get through with the first fight, and what could be very rude with three thousand at the second spot. If you're gonna be trying some fame march, just twenty-five and thirty-five thousand. You need some damage. So having a cursed Hella, but that can also do some some work to assist with the battle is gonna be huge. So. Um, Night is probably a little disappointed, uh, but at the same time, maybe a little bit relieved. Although that's his second curse ring. I think he found one um, underground earlier. Yep, there was uh, one in the Talmud Treasury for the taking, so two available now. Um, it's very interesting to see where he goes at this point. Martin about to uh, get his package from, uh, from the Bay March. Head on down, probably take a look at those bosses. Uh, very curious to see what they'll do at this point. Because a lot of our a lot of our easy overworld checks is you can get them right out of the way. Antlines over, if the rules gone, um, and you can check, make a couple character checks, but that's not really what we need right now. Not so much. Knight do going to check the character here. Um, I'm not sure there's anyone that I really love at this point. If I had a couple eggs, I could get pound to quake, but Yang does not spark joy in my life. Looks like he thought about it for a second with his 85 claws, but as we all know, Yang referred to as the Punch Mage, where um, Sid or an Edge or previous flags, Cecil, you find equipment, they're good to go. Yang's final weapon is levels. Levels are difficult to come by. Night Dew having exhausted uh, really all of the options, looks like it's going to go ahead and try to take on what can potentially be a bit of a tricky dwarf spot, so we'll have to see who the boss is here. Yeah, this will be very interesting. Uh, and yeah, you were uh, absolutely correct about Yang. I like to think of him as kind of the inverse of Sid. He's uh, got the decent health pool, but you know, will fall over to a light breeze early, but late game, where Sid is settling into a nice retirement of uh, slinging potions of other party members is where Yang finally picks up. I believe I saw Dr. Luge dancing around back there in the first spot. That's not too bad, since now the HP for this spot gets split across three different uh, three different enemies instead of one. Uh, in addition, um, the many Thunderclaws that we've joked about, and really the, the big deal is the Bacchus wine. Because in the second phase, uh, with the Sid Anchor, it's likely that they're all going to go ahead and get poisoned. And when you're poisoned, you can't cast Berserk, but with Bacchus wine, they can go ahead and do it themselves. Um, so this is... If, if you're forced into the spot, which... It's not that they, they have to do this one specifically, but they're a little bit forced into the spot. Um, this is a boss that you welcome seeing here, because you should be fine. Yeah, outside of doing something like taking on Dark Elf in a non-required spot and hoping to use some of uh, Tella's tricks to get through his non-boss bit flagged second phase, uh, yeah, this is a pretty good, this is probably their best fight. Uh, be interesting to see Edge get all those Thunderclaws up. The uh, Boreas actually did a pretty good uh, amount of damage there, as did Balheim's opening punch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, very, very, very doable. Um, so they'll be casting Berserk on this one. Uh, this boss should not be long for this world. Um, 
Agility wise is interesting because the first boss is relatively slow, but the second one is kind of quick. So, um, Sid not uh, cursed at all, but not terribly fast either in the center slot. I feel like it's kind of like split the difference there a little bit. Yeah, Sid, Sid kind of the, uh, the, the baby bear option. Not too slow, not too fast, just right. So, uh, I'm going to try to get off this Berserk first. We'll see if it goes off before the poison hits. It does, and Night Dew should be through. That, uh, that heroin rope paying off even just in utility. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and the, uh, and the Artie Bow also, that's a plus 25. Ooh, spicy. Although we're going to have to change Rose manually again. <laughs> but, oh, he doesn't have the Thunderclaw on! No, he, uh, looks like, it looked from the first one like he's fighting with two mute knives. I believe uh, so. I wondered if he was going to try to slip on on before the Berserk hit in the previous fight, but it did not, uh, did not happen. Yeah, well, it's not a ton of, um... On a ton of HP here to be through pretty quick no matter what. Yep, look at Tella hitting four digits with a virus. We're proud of you, Tella. Uh, from the charm rod that they found earlier doing some work, and down Seems goes like <laughs> You know, well, Martin demonstrating another way to take take apart a machine, and that's with one of Sid's uh, hammers. Uh, just knocking over about that before we even get through the opening monologue. Yeah, loot-wise, it's it's really, uh, in terms of loot advantages, it's really the Heroin Rope for Forum versus the Earth Hammer of Sid. Uh, I'm a big Heroin Rope fan, so I, quite, I feel like that's a loot advantage for Night Dew. There's Palom. Let's see what they do here. Yep, take Palom over, over Tella. Okay, Palom. That's, that's a bold choice right there. And Pale Dim. So no elemental magic will work here. Um, the fact that there's no Thunderclaw equipped is good. Um, be interesting to see the progression after this. Um, I'm a little surprised that they got rid of Tella this early. Um, I guess if you're gonna, you know, if we only we have two shops left to tr go ahead and try to find Sirens. Um, this party needs levels. Um, Yep, I guess at this point maybe thinking that Porum can handle the utility aspect as well as Telecam. At this point you're just hoping that Palum uh, can pick up the damaging, you know, can pick up enough levels from getting him this soon to uh, get his damage online. Uh, but it also does take uh, D-Machine off the table for Night Dew. I mean, he, he, um, you know, theoretically, it, it, when he goes to raise the wheel, he can go ahead and... Um, Could pick his whole damage attack. Martin keeping Tella and getting rid of a large part of his DPS with Fid. So we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see how this all pans out. Um, for for Night Dew, that Porum with the Heron Rope, in addition to the agility and in, in addition to the, the DPS input, the defense with that Rope is fantastic. So in terms of protecting your healer, it's it's reasonable to go ahead and kind of keep her around. Yeah, I'm guessing Martin are perhaps already planning for an endgame party, but like the ones we've seen a decent amount on these seeds where you have uh, one to two mages, maybe one berserker, and then one anchor, uh, with Tella probably pulling the anchor position on that side. So if I'm Night Dew here and eventually Martin, I am hoping for some kind of legitimate progression. Uh, I would love to get a hook, because that would be both uh, my adamant, which would be a game changer in this scene, especially against that that puts that dark elf on the on the table, um, and uh, plus they have the rat tail to turn in also. So I'm I'm praying for a hook here. That's if I'm on these runners, that's that's my item of choice. Yep, that is what I would love to see right now. And also as this music plays, uh, shout out for absolutely no reason to Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, if you know, you know. Uh, so. Uh, Night of Dew holding us in suspense here by equipping people <laughs> in the Dwarf Castle throne room. Well, there's the, Without there's... leaving. <laughs> he just wanted to give the tracker some time. It's fine. He really did. Finds the Legend Sword. Half a forge. So it's half an objective, so it, it was at least required, and now we get that nice poison walk. Uh, everyone's favorite. Um... So... If it's me, I'm going top of tower. I don't, I don't want, I mean, that, ugh. I mean, yeah, that, dark, I, I, that dark elf is doable, but that's, that's going to be a, a long fight, although Night do. well, they, have, they, they, I guess they have the hourglass, I was going to say with, um, with Tella, you can go ahead and cast Weak, but he got rid of Tella, um, 
So if I'm Night Dew, I'm thinking I'm probably going top of tower. Yeah, you could. The Dark Elf, the the second half of the Dark Elf is doable, but you gotta get through the first half. And the magic in that spot is okay because of why I've been being there. At least it's not taking advantage of physical attacks. But yeah, this just makes much more sense right now. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for the raid, Possum. Uh, no spoilers, but I hope that your your race went well. So appreciate that. Welcome, Raiders. Uh, we have a very uh, evenly matched, very exciting race filled with smart, pragmatic decisions. Uh, a little bit of divergence, but it's all kind of coming to a head here, um, as both uh, Martin and Night Dew are hoping to find some kind of progression here uh, at Helis Tower. Uh, they've got, they both have their anchoring set up, with Martin using te a Cursed Tella, uh, whereas Night Dew is using a Dwarf Axe and Cursed Sin. And uh, we're going to the top, we're going to find out who the boss is at the top of the tower, and try to find out where we can go next, because if it's not this, I believe the only choices left are Ruby in the Baron Basement or the Fey March, which did not look terribly pleasant. Yep, containing a Dark Elf and an Octomam uh, with Dark Elf in the King Spot and Octomam with the Queen Spot. We'll have to come back to the Octomam eventually, but I don't think our runners want to do it right now. Uh, and Odin up here on the top of the tower. Alright, not bad, especially with Night Goose 16 Thunder Claws and an Edge. Uh, you should have this uh, in hand. Correct. Uh, Palom not knowing lit two or three just yet, obviously. Um, oh, actually, no. Palom might have lit two on on both sides if they both survive the uh, the first fight. So, Charm Rod lit two, not terrible. Um, a Bacchus, uh Thunderclaw, uh, a Bandana, not too bad. This is uh, this is manageable here. Interestingly, uh, Martin finds an alert. I'm going to use the uh, Never Seen in Vanilla for uh, and uh, Forum and Edge combo to cry at it, lowering its resistance to stealing, and then stealing some sirens. Pretty heads up. Um, you don't see this terribly often. Um, also, oh, tell it. Come on, buddy. Is oh, it tell it? Oh, no. <laughs> um, using the Hourglass to go ahead and prevent the... Um, the constant evaluating or whatever the, the prompt is to go ahead and try to save some time. Um, and speaking of saving time, taking out both Tella and Alum or to go ahead and just steal as many as they could can. So um, this is pretty heads up. Um, this is one of the faster ways to go ahead and steal Sire that you're ever going to see. Um, so a little bit of divergence, and we'll see if this time uh, pays off. Man, he's hit Pater between the, the cry of, of Forum and... Um, yeah, it's so fast how quickly he's racking these up. Knight Dew uh, takes out Odin, gets a Earth Crystal for his trouble, so you know that this is up, but even if it's not eat by. It's uh, progression and it's manageable bosses and two character traits. It's a long check, um, but it's... Um, at least it, it's a better option than the ones that exist outside of this. Um, if you're... If you're Martin, is this your final party? I think so, yeah. I I think that, you know, you've got your anchor, you've got, uh, you've got a little physical power, you've got a little magical power, and you, and you do get these mixed parties showing up often on these seats because maybe you don't have the uh, the power to have, like, a, you know, edge swing for, you know, six or seven K each round, but he can chip in up to a certain point and then uh, just help keep Palom alive and let nukes... Uh, nukes and potentially even whites from Quorum finish the job. Yeah, if I'm Martin, this is who I'm playing at the game. You have to wonder if once he's done with Top of Tower, he'll get his Earth Crystal. If I'm him and I'm I'm grinding all of this, I'm probably just doing pay much. I'm going to go ahead and take care of my required Ashura and what is a very manageable, um, especially with levels, a very manageable Dark Elf at the at the um, at the Leviathan spot. So we're gonna get some, um, we're gonna get some real divergence here. Uh, it's a calculated uh, decision that uh, he's making to go ahead and invest in both procuring these sirens and in, I assume, doing a grind soon rather than later. So it's gonna feel like Night Dew's way ahead, and we'll see if the time is well spent for Martin to go ahead and catch up. Yep, Martin snapping up 18 sirens before he finishes up, and uh, Night Dew heading up to do the Tower of Zop. Uh, oh, we're actually going to see a treasury check. Oh, wow. The... Okay. <laughs> Great! 
Protectoring a silk web, very valuable. Stardust drive for how long? Yeah, alright. Earth mother protectoring. <laughs> Strength ring for edge. You I mean, know, for T Pro, this was a good treasury, I don't think it. <laughs> and, and those protect rings are not not terrible with what's a relatively fragile party. Um, yeah. Uh, Night Dew going ahead and immediately slapping those protect rings onto those fragile twins, uh, upgrading Palum to the Stardust Rod. Uh, Edge probably picking up his, uh, yeah, Edge probably picking up a uh, strength and maybe that karate shirt. Yeah. Squeeze every little last bit out of the DPS out of your ninja too. I mean, it's it's not, it, it's it, within expectations. It's not terrible. Uh, to answer a question, in chat from earlier, uh, can your HP run out of uh, from sneaking? Yep. Uh, can you go ahead and walk the entire self cave and then decide to go ahead and try to steal some sirens and then die and not save? Yes, these are all things that I don't know from personal experience. Except I do. I do know from personal experience. You can yeah, absolutely this... die from, uh, <laughs> from Oof. From sneaking sneaking and then dying? Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, if 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 Free Enterprise had Darwin Awards, that would be uh that would be probably one of the better ways to go. You're picking up a charm claw here, possibly hoping to find a uh, flame dog in one of the easy to find, easy on the beaten path chests in the zone. Did not manage to do it. Continue down up the tower. Uh, Martin taking on that Odin over here. Uh, proving a little more trouble for him, but uh, I think it's only because he wants to keep that uh, uh, alum up and alive. Yeah, uh, we got a sword up here. I haven't been keeping track of the HP, but uh, he should be fine. There he is. Um, so if this put yeah. Palum up to Quake, which I believe that it will, um, that gives him a way to kill eggs with one shot, uh, especially with the Charm Rod. Yep. Uh, Martin is definitely ready to go uh, spend those 18 eggs for Power Over Lama, and uh, maybe just finish off the Underground while he's here. Uh, Night Dew finding Dimps at the Maga Sister spot. Power Glasses, this is free. Um, we might see some life glitching here and get a little bit of... Uh, yeah, nope. Oh, we won't. We're going to see uh, an earthquake and death. That's what we're going to see. Yep, just going to uh, berserk that edge. Toss out some quakes on Palom. Oh, yeah. Palom pretty much handling the bombs out. Yeah. And that's that. So, if you're Night Dew, is there any character you take? Um, if, if he's maybe looking to replace that Sid, but I don't know if Night Dew is at this moment. Maybe a Rosa who would go ahead and have exit now. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think at this point I would be hard pressed to take someone out of Zot, especially because even on a normal seat at 44 minutes in doing Zot, I'm only looking for someone like Fu or Cecil, basically. And those I, are not options here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I'm taking second Palom. Martin's going to go ahead and start his grind. Um, so he's not he's nowhere near 10 key items, and he's not going to have enough to go ahead and get all up to Quake, or up to, up to Nuke, excuse me. He's certainly going to have enough levels to go ahead and take on the, uh, the Fade March. There's that Rosa. Um, let's see what he does. These are not easy decisions to make. Yeah, I think second Palom is definitely uh, not going to be here. Rosa, Rosa more up in the air, I think. Or maybe we are looking at second Palom over Poro. <laughs> and then Rosa okay, over second Palom. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, um... Well, Rosa, yeah, welcome yeah. to the party. Here's your Artemis... Here's your Artemis No Tiara Heroin Robe kit. Are you mad that you were tied up and almost got killed by a giant bowling ball, Rosa? Here. Here, have all the things and take out your revenge. Martin doing only a handful of eggs. We'll see where he's headed next. That's interesting. Yeah, I think we can safely assume Zod. Yep, there we go. Martin heading up the Tower of Zod. You have to wonder... Uh, ooh. Uh, this is not terrible. Uh, I wonder if Etch has any darts. Go ahead and make this go a little faster. I know we've seen a couple of Drain Swords, and we don't have a Cecil. Use them, so... Might see some... Nope, we're just gonna see uh, some... Uh, 
some angry edge and hope that we can go ahead and get through this. Uh, we are we are going to yellow this now, so this could get very this could get very spicy. Yeah, only five thousand uh, HP on that CPU. Um, so I think a couple swings <laughs> from edge, one or two. Uh, CPU weirdly yeah. enough not weak to thunder. Um, also weirdly enough not floating. So this game makes total sense. Uh, we are through. So Rose is going to get her exit. We're going to find out if this is the progression we've been looking for, or if Night Duke has some very difficult decisions coming up. Martin doing some shopping in, uh, in Troy at first before heading, before presumably heading up the uh, tower. I wonder <laughs> if. Yeah. I wonder if Martin. Uh, ooh. Oh, we have another another moment here. Another treasure check. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Uh, Mart Martin really going to uh, enjoy finding that Stardust Rod for his Palom, I have to imagine. Yeah. Well, I almost put the advantage on Martin right now because uh, that White Spear is not the progression that we're looking for uh, in the slightest. And that leaves us with Fey March. Uh, Martin's going to probably, I, I would assume, maybe dump Quorum to go ahead and get um, uh, Rosa up to you know, levels where she can go ahead and either uh, attack or be a, a very viable white mage. Um, and maybe with all the Siren, do you think second Helm? Do you think in two sets of nuke? Um, it's going to be interesting to see the, the choices that they make here. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can charm claw palom plus uh, or charm charm claw. Sheesh, charm rod palom plus stardust rod palom. Perfectly feasible, I suppose. So, and we have yeah, protect rings problem too. I mean, that's gonna that's gonna help a lot with um, you know. So if you're on Night side, uh, heroin rope, protect ring, Rosa in the back row should be able to tank quite a bit. With that Octomam fight, uh, as, as we all know, three attacks for the first tentacle down, and then two attacks for each following one, and the agility slowly gets lower and lower and lower. Probably looking for um, lit arrows, but that full moon allows Edge to go into the back row, and so that will certainly help keep Edge stay alive. So if you can get through these first few sets of attacks, you're probably more or less free. Uh, not having a higher level Porum or Tella, it's really difficult for his party to heal right now. Speaking of uh, fun toys for uh, Edge, Martin finds Flame Dog in the very first chest in Zot and pulls out a uh, pulls out uh, a Masa or a Mira, one of the two. Uh, according to chat, that was a Masamune. Uh, yeah, some uh, some some nice Hanzo steel for his Edge here. Maybe a little more reluctant to get rid of him now. <laughs> Uh, that's that's true. That's very true. I think that uh, if there's any doubt, he is not here to stay. Alright, here we are with the uh, Octomip. Yeah, so Edge, uh, that full moon already paying dividends, uh, because you have to imagine that he would probably be in the front row, uh, if not for that full moon, uh, which means he'd probably be dead right now. Callum going with a virus cast first, probably because of the cast time, as they're trying to go ahead and get those few attacks in. Edge not having the Thunderclaw on uh, might be a bit of an issue. Yeah, I believe, uh, I believe it's uh, just full moon, yeah, full moon longsword. I believe okay. that is correct. We have, uh, we lost one tentacle. Uh, we're getting to, uh, now every couple hits, I can to lose a couple more, get slower, get slightly weaker. Uh, and it's really, Night Dude's really weathered that storm at the beginning of Akimam now. And, uh, I think if, uh, if Palom will quit falling over, we'll probably see some blinks come out and we'll get through here. We're, I think we're in very good shape uh, on Night Dude's side. So this will be a, an objective completed, possible progression. Uh, if there is no progression, uh, there is a doable uh, Dark Elf at the Leviathan spot, but that's going to be a little bit time consuming. Um, or a very unpleasant uh, ruby in the Baron basement. So I think he's going to be able to go ahead and get through this. Uh, very nicely done on my Dew's side. Um, certainly not over yet, but he's in really, really, really good shape. 
Um, yeah, wouldn't want, to, wouldn't want to jinx it, I guess. <laughs> no. Um, but with, with the again, as we talked about earlier, with, with the way that we have these runners, um, they're they're just they're very 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 good. Martin uh, definitely looking like he's picked his party for the end game, telling that Palomam and Rosa both to uh, kick rocks and uh, proceeding straight to the boss. If he was at 10 key items, he might have maybe considered it with the, with the Cyrus that he has, but um, I, I fully support this decision, especially with the DPS he's going to get from Edge now with the with the mess and, and knowing that eventually you're going to get an Adam. I'm slowly but surely running out of arms over here on I do side. Still hasn't uh, quite gone down yet. It's not, just, very often you see, not very often you see him get down to one tentacle. On Martin's side, plows through the CPU just as quickly as Night Dew did. Going to get that uh, white spear now for a dragoon who has not appeared in the sea. Night Dew takes down the Aftermath, put its objective out of the way, and it'll be interesting. Now we can see what we get behind it. Yeah. It's the pass. Oh man. I, well, I mean you like to see it, but it's it's not it's not forward progress. So we have the Dark Elf and we have Ruby at the Odin Throne. Yeah. Uh, Night Dew wisely saving. Um The hourglass that um he has will come in very handy here once they get into the uh the you know, the, the dragon part of the Dark Elf phase. Um, it's a lot, it's 35,000 HP here. It's a lot. Um, and as Martin begins his grind, and we'll get through it much faster, especially with the Tell that can pass week, um, Night Dew is in for, in for some fun here. It's manageable, it's doable, but it is not pleasant, and above everything else, but with the race, it is not fast. Yeah, but uh, it does have the benefit that you really just need to get through the first half here. So this is really half a fight at the little happens spot. And uh, I don't think the magic will be doing too much here. No, it's really good that these bosses weren't flipped, because the magic of the Assure spot is very high. Um, and while that was a very punchy Assure, it wasn't as punchy as this spot is here. Um, that is a that's a that's a speedy Dark Elf, though. Um, so uh, one thing to look for will be Palom uh, turning into a pig, because a piggy Palom uh, cannot go ahead and uh, cast Quake. So it's... Uh... Oh, we, already, but we already have a Bacchus uh, Edge, so that Berserk should hold true, uh, as this little piggy is going to go to town. A piggy Edge can do just as much good as regular Edge. Given that Berserk came before he turned into a pick, means that it's really just a nice cosmetic change to replace Edge with this cute pick spray. It is adorable, that is true. I think it's the eyes, quite frankly. They just, uh, I don't know, something about them just seems very innocent and pure. <laughs> Not words one usually thinks that was associated with Edge, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. Oh man, this could go down a path of conversation that I don't think I'm allowed to continue because I won't be allowed to do comms anymore, so we're gonna no. move on. Um. While we're uh, while we're watching uh, Night Dew chew through HP and Martin uh, make omelets over here, uh, just want to give another shout out to these runners who have put an amazing show so far. Uh, trying to diverge as much as they can, even though the uh, seed has kind of funneled them in a straight line. And uh, shout out to Esperant for rolling the seed, uh, putting on this amazing restream, and uh, Sheep Watcher for pushing the buttons and answering questions in slash entertaining the chat. Also, a big shout out to my co commentator John Burkhead, a very entertaining streamer. Give him a follow and uh, check him out when uh, he's streaming. Of course, the obligatory uh, shout out to Stoppable Force. It is always pleasant to be able to have such free flowing conversation with another member of this beautiful, wonderful community. So, uh, thank you so much, my friend. This is a uh, nice when we can just go ahead and talk uh, for Enterprise. It's great to go ahead and, and get fun. It's uh, always great, and uh, just a really pleasant community. If you have, a, if you're watching this and you're wondering about free enterprise, you want to know how you can get involved, whether you're racing or just playing casually, uh, we do have a Discord uh, full of extremely active, helpful community members. Uh, pop in pretty much any time, and uh, just get some anything from newbie tips to some really, really intricate technical details about all the fun ways this game cut corners in vanilla that wasn't obvious in vanilla until you. Uh, 
to do a randomizer. Ah, uh, for sure. Alright, back to the race. We have uh, a stopped Dark Elf um, and a Berserked Piggy Edge uh, going to town on here. We're gonna hope that this Hourglass holds out for a while. It is an Hourglass 2, not an Hourglass 1, so we should be okay, but it is a lot of HP to cut through. We saw how punchy it can get. The one punch it got off uh, was like 15, 1600 on Sid. Um, so that Hourglass definitely paying dividends. We are through. So the question is, progression? Or are we going to the basement? Fingers crossed. It's the darkness crystal. There's our there's our path to the moon. And that's got to be a relief uh, to find that because um, that uh, that ruby down in the barren basement is less than ideal. It'll be easier for Edge, uh, or it's gonna be easier for Martin with all of his levels and an ice claw. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's that's definitely got to be a relief really for Knight do. So as at this point... As the, inventory boss tries to, as the inventory boss tries to make Knight do accidentally throw the Darkness Crystal away. <laughs> yeah. uh, for all, all the many bugs of this game, that is one thing the game probably will not let you do. Um, so that's, that's definitely got to be a relief. Um, so now comes a matter of... Martin's going to get through these fights much faster. How much faster? Right? Everything, you know, the whole goal obviously is to go ahead and finish this as quickly as we can. So now we go ahead and get to see does the time that Martin invested into very quickly stealing all of those sirens and uh, using them is he is he going to pay dividends? Is he going to go ahead and catch up? Um, Night Dew stocking up on Bacchus wine, so probably be checking the moon shop. I would assume probably for sirens more than anything else. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how quickly um, our runners get through. These, these next few checks. Yeah, um, Berserk in chat pointing out an interesting fact. Our runners are still at nine key items. They still have not hit that ten key item threshold to get uh, the double XP that you really like for your grind. Might do probably hoping that he, that he can spike a key item very early on the moon, maybe something out of cave value, just to go ahead and get those XP values up. Right now we are looking for the hook, the adamant, uh, and the harp. Yep, K value is probably my first stop uh, because um, it's required. Might get your tenth key item, and the uh, experience there isn't, you know, for uh, as far as a moon boss goes, it's not really that much. So you're not really losing too much by doing that without the speed of the ten key item bonus. Martin, yeah, it's, a, it's a decent place to start, and it means they don't. And it's and it's a way of putting off basement Rubikin in case he's somehow <laughs> relevant. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, I, I mean, that spot can be rude, though. You put a bike in there, you put, uh, you know, like, well, airlines are off the table, but you put anything there that punches, and that spot can be just awful. Um, so, uh, yeah. Night Dew without levels might not be able to. Yeah, one of those fun facts for people who are new to the community, there are a few spots in the game that never physically attack, and for whatever reason, when they were coded, they have max physical attack, 255. Uh, and so, when we put bosses in there that scale to the spot they're standing at, and do use those attack stats. Yeah, kind of nasty. And uh, Kate Bahamut is one of those. So, it uh, be interesting to see what's here. They're hoping probably to run into something magical, maybe something non-threatening like a plague. Plague would be fantastic here. Or honestly, even vanilla Bahamut. <laughs> yeah. Um, Star Veils have been for sale at a few spots. I don't know if they picked... I think they probably started with one or two, and I haven't been paying... Oh, you know, that much attention to see if they've actually uh, gone ahead and picked them up or not. Um, but, but, yeah. I believe Martin might have picked up a few since he kind of picked up everything in Agart's uh, shop to you drop variety store. Uh, sirens available on the moon, so might do just grabbing three. But uh, good to know an easy source of them if he needs more of them later. With uh, with ten key items, um, eventually at some point we might see some uh, some gold dragons. Might see them here actually. If he does uh, gets through Cape Bahamut, uh, he probably still has sour glasses. And then with ten key items, those uh, those gold dragon fights are 180,000 XP a pop. Um, but you know the benefits of doing an early grind we're seeing already. Um, Martin between the Thunderclaw and his levels plowed through that Octavamp with with very little issue. Um, and once this uh, Dark Elf changes uh, states, assuming Tella doesn't get knocked out, we'll probably uh, be seeing a weak cast. And 
Second act, you're going to go ahead and pop the siren now to summon the Double King when you fight. He's an hourglass on it. This will be a real nice infusion of XP, even if he is not quite a tanky item. He can still use a life glitch to get a little extra XP. Uh, that's where they get their queued up physical attacks out of the way. Uh, and then finish them off. It's a little painful to do this in nine key items, um, but it's it's uh, certainly understandable. Hella does not get knocked out. The week goes off, and um, if this fight is just much, much faster for Martin. So he's already beginning to go ahead and take us some time. Sheep Launcher pointing out that the boss that was visible over on the Bahama Throne was a Lunar Sparkle. So at this point, with the ones we've seen, I believe we're looking at Plague and Wyvern. Are the two that we have left? Oh, and Ogopogo. Ogopogo's actually. Yeah. Well, Ogo's going to punch uh, quite a bit here, actually. Ogo, Ogo would be terrible. Plague is, is, is probably the best-case scenario. Yeah, Plague or Wyvern would be all right. Ogo Pogo is going to absolutely punch our runners uh, a lot, and uh, given the way that Escron seeds tend to go, I'm going to assume it's Ogo Pogo until proven otherwise. Yeah, the, the magic is, is, uh, is fairly low. Martin is going... To the basement. I mean, he has a nice claw, and he has a, a pretty beefy edge. Um, and I guess he's got some pretty good levels to go ahead and get some Cure 3s off. Um, well, okay. Um, maybe uh, maybe an Ice 3 cast or, or Quake to go ahead and kind of get through this. Um, uh, that Ice yeah. Claw can do some serious work, but it's an interesting choice. I think Martin just uh, opting to completely clear the blue planet. Uh, once he does this, he's got his pass. He knows he doesn't need to be back here for any reason except to finish up objectives. If he doesn't find anything that he needs here, then he knows everything he needs is on the moon. But if he could spike the hook here, then that could... The hook could turn into the rat tail, could turn into Cape Magnus, and potentially the moon could be completely haunted. Uh, so this could be a very interesting divergence point. Another uh, point of Night Dude not having Tella is no one can cast weak. So these grinds are, these fights are taking just a little bit of time. So you have to wonder if that decision is going to come back to kind of bite him a little bit. Looks like he's in the lead for now, but we'll see what happens here. Yeah, Night Dude having to take these dragons out the old fashioned way, uh, chewing through all their HP. <laughs> See these uh, on the fire too from the uh, Ruby not hurting too bad as a counter, and that ice claw letting uh, you know, letting Edge put up nearly 80, 80 100 damage a swing on. Uh, it's not too bad. Ice too, not a pound helping too. And that's that. Oh, Martin clearly knew what he was doing. I do haven't got his dragon grind out of the way. Going to save Martin getting just a Mirasame for his uh, for his base on trouble. I'm trying to see if he walks it out and keeps double Mira and Edge. I I would. I absolutely would. I know yeah, that it's a, so a minus. <laughs> <laughs> like I know it's a minus five agility, but you know that's that's a that's a that's a, that's a sharp little swing right there. So. Yeah, you uh, the 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 treasured Hanzo steel. Uh, yeah, powering up that edge even more. So, Night Dude done with his grinds, saved outside, healed up, and we're going to find out uh, what uh, brand of Sparkle we're going to be dealing with here at a required game value. Are you hoping for an Ogopogo, or are you hoping they get off easy? Yeah, I'm, I'm not running this. I want... <laughs> Listen, I am... I am Scheidenfreude personified. I want pain and difficulty... So that you know, it's it's like the Colosseum back in the, in the ancient Roman times. I want I want us all entertained. Well, so we got a wyvern. I'm, I'm at least half entertained. So with the with the cursed ring, they'll be able to get the star veils off, and the magic here is actually pretty low. So these nukes are not gonna hit uh, all that badly. Um, the flip side is is I believe it's what 35, 38,000 HP here. There's a lot of experience to go ahead and get through. So they might be playing some life roulette. Yeah, and the downside is only not only managing to get one life, uh, excuse me, one star veil off before the initial blark. So uh, now we're now we're just chewing through the rest of this, and we're going to be not launching those nukes here fairly soon. Yep. Uh, Night Dew, I don't believe found that shop that had all those goodies that we were talking about earlier. Um, and that's a really unfortunate target. Night Dew might be in a little bit of trouble here, um, and if those are his last couple of uh, life pots here, this could get real sketchy real quick. Yeah, 
and those nukes just then, and then now coming out making it Rosa. At least we have set up to uh, sling some potions, but uh, running, running low on curative items there. So really hoping that they continue to maybe target, maybe target Sid. Uh, leave leave Palom and Edge alone. <laughs> yep, and uh, what we were talking about earlier about you know, would the time uh, difference pay off here? Um, here we have Martin coming into this fight. Martin, you have to imagine, is probably going to get through the fight a little bit faster. Um, bought those life pots, and uh, despite quite a bit of divergence, here we have Martin, who's done an extra check, has better equipment, both with the Massa and the Mura, as the Flame Dog and the Baron Basement. Um, we might be seeing a bit of a leech age here. Uh, correction on that, it was actually a Mura from Flame Dog, so it is just double Mura. Apologies. That's, uh, it went by, I mean, it, it, it went by so fast. I don't think that it, if Night Dew's going to get through this, which uh, I think he's got about 12 or 14, probably about, probably about 10 uh, HP left at this point. Um, I don't think that Martin's going to get through it first, but um, trying to run buffer to get it to get an extra target off. We'll see what happens here. Oh, he does get two off. Um, it resigned to his fate. Uh, tell it going down. Um, I don't think that Martin's going to finish this first. But I think that uh, Martin's going to get through the fight in less time, and is going to start to take a pretty solid lead. Yeah, his uh, having both the twins up not not too terrible at all. Uh, bringing Tella up to serve probably as another target for Wyvern to hit. Uh, managing to get the berserks and the spells out before the uh, before the wall even goes up. So nice speed difference here. Thank you turning up the pan as the reward for Cave Bahama. Uh, could be another key item. Uh, if it were you, would you be tempted to chase this and hope the moon is haunted, or are you going to dive some more moon spots? I would. I, I, I would. This is too. Um, I would chase it. There's two, uh, two, two key atom checks. You really want the hook. If you got, if that hook's an adamant, um, all of a sudden your moon gets a whole lot easier. And there's only um, the only moon objective that you have. You just did in in Cave Bahamut. Um, I absolutely, uh, I would save scum this and I would go check this. Yeah, it looks like Night Dew, uh, Night Dew agreeing with you. Night Dew hoping Moon is haunted. Going to go in, going to go, uh, whack Yang on the head of the pan. See what we get from there, since, uh, K Summon is on. The Sylphs could potentially also be hiding one of our key items. And then, uh, go hand that pan back to Sheila if we need to. Yep. Um, it's been a, you know, it's been a very, very linear seed. Still have quite a few key items uh, left, so um, and you have what is it? Uh, two, three, four, five. There, there's six key item chest checks left in the uh, LST. Um, you've, you've already done Fey March. You've already done Dwarf. Um, you have two spots here, and you have Power Key, and you have um, Super Cannon. So the chance of this being uh, a Zonk or both of them being songs, it's not terribly likely. Uh, shout out to Tella for doing his job on Martin's side and eating a nuke with 5 HP. And uh, Edge on the other side living through it. Uh, another upside of having grind of, of grinding versus low magic here is Edge can actually take one of these nukes and live. Yep, don't think Tella's going to survive that one though, probably not. That is the second or third nuke I've seen that Tele eat to the face. They just bring him back up and he gets knocked over again. <laughs> so for for like to use temp key item, he finds himself a uh, a throwable spoon, which will probably be used at some point. Um, not the key item he was looking for, but the key item that he got. Martin is through, finds his pan. Oh, I guess I guess the pan was the temp key item, so that'd be eleven. Apologies, numbers are hard. Um, and we'll see what Barton decides to do. Yep, uh, and I do anything up here to hand Sheila a pan saying, please, please give me a hug. <laughs> uh, Don't make me go back grind. to that moon, Sheila. <laughs> uh, Martin continuing his grind. Sheila, Sheila, with, Sheila with no goods today as opposed to all the goods. A, uh, a sorcerer robe. But it looks like uh, Night Dew is, uh, well, maybe splitting the difference between uh, White Mage Rosa and Angry Anger Rosa. 
Um, yeah, the Artemis bow nice for speeding her up at the start of a fight. Uh, you can easily swap it off of her later uh, once the agility situation is straightened out. Uh, that Sorcerer Rope gives her a nice boost of uh, actual casting stats and magic defense. Yeah, we haven't really seen any Life Staff, any Silent Staff, any Lunar Staff. We haven't really seen any of the higher end uh, white mage uh, items before. And I do probably look for life pots if I had to guess. Uh, those soak weapons are nice though. I know they got one from the treasury, but a couple extras is not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I believe uh, Chap was pointing out that uh, Night Dew ran out of uh, life pots during that Wyvern fight and was unable to get Rosa up. Uh, so definitely probably looking to refill here. I know we've seen them, but I don't remember where. I think that might also be Agrid. It was Agrid. Agrid had uh, a lot of the goods. Um, Sylveria might have them also. It's possible to have the life pots in more than one shot. Um, but I do definitely try to go ahead and find those. That is not a life pot. No, Odin and bombs. <laughs> on, on Martin's side, you have to wonder if he's uh, trying to get Palm up to nuke here. Um, 180 uh, a pop is makes it pretty viable. Yeah, especially now that he's hit that 10k threshold, and his is go a little quicker because he has Tella to sling weak in the center. Um, so it definitely makes this a quicker prospect for him. I do, I do finding everything except life pots. <laughs> yep. It's uh, going to be incredibly frustrating. And can't exit out of the shop because Rose is dead and can't bring Rosa back to life because wait for it, Rose is dead. So, <laughs> oof. Oh, hopefully he'll hopefully he'll pick Aggard soon. Meanwhile, yeah. uh, Palum at um, at Medio means that this is more than likely the last uh, bit of grinding that Martin's going to do for the entire seat. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if he decides to go ahead and check the pan, or if he decides uh, to go ahead and blow up the moon. Um, either way, uh, Martin is got one melee character uh, for some good battle insurance. He has two uh, very, very uh, well-built small children that know all the spells. And he has a cursed tell for anchoring. So Martin's Martin's good. He is uh, very much good to go here. Yeah, this is his in-game party and the gear they're going to wear to the fight at the levels they need to take on Zeromus. And at this point, he just needs to uh, swoop up those last three key items. And unfortunately, we know that they are not behind the pan. So, if Martin stays on the moon, it's probably going to pay out here. Yeah. So, we'll see uh, where he decides to go. Getting his uh, spells uh, all in check so that he only has to menu through them once. Night Dew, uh, thankfully, is finding the item shop of goodness. He'll be able to pick up his life box. And then you have to imagine that uh, he will be heading right back towards the moon. Welcome to Agar, where we stored absolutely everything you could ever want. <laughs> Yeah, Martin not, Martin not chasing the pan. Martin going right next door to the moon, going to uh, blow up. Yeah. Uh, I believe Martin did buy cabins uh, at that agar shop, but it's using the cabin that we have at home. Um, if I had to guess, probably heading right down to the ribbon room, but honestly, who knows? That would be my guess. Uh, Martin did not save outside. Uh, we'll find a character here that is almost guaranteed to be booted out of uh, to be rejected. Um, and judging by the fact that he didn't save outside, means he's probably going down to that uh, ribbon room in White Spear Floor. Um, I refuse to acknowledge that there's even a character there in the first place. Uh, uh, but, but John, we had first Edward. What about second Edward? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The most shocking part about the seat is the fact that he didn't run away from his own teammates and actually tried to enter into the party. Uh, the brave bard that he is. Oh, uh, this Edward also told the kick rocks. Martin heading down in the lunar subterrain. Uh, Night Dew going to find his moon bard now as well. Yeah. So it's going to be curious. So a, a big part of both the uh, bracket and group flags is how much of the moon do you do? You know, there's been on average around three key items or so that you kind of find on the moon. Um, they found one with the pan uh, in Cape Bahamut. We need three. It's going to be curious to see, um, you know, when they get the hook. That means that's that's a rat tail on Earth that, that you can go ahead and check. 
Barton doesn't know that the pan doesn't really pan out much of anything at all. It's going to be curious to see how long Martin does moon bosses, which he can get through very quickly between a well-equipped edge and a duking palum. Does he pull clear? Does he hit a certain amount and then say, all right, it's time to go ahead and check my earth checks? For Knight Dew's Path to Victory, uh, you see divergence in the end there, the choices here. I think it's going to determine on how quickly Martin bails on the moon. Yeah, Knight Dew uh, opted to go top down, going, uh, at least back on the moon, going straight to this mom bomb at the uh, uh, altar. Uh, Martin, Martin's saving his game. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Before continuing on to check the, uh, the big three down here, probably Crystal Sword at least. That uh, front row palum, uh, not liking that mom bomb. No, uh, mom bomb. Mom bomb kind of punchy wherever, but uh, mom bomb especially punchy here. And uh, that palum not designed to take punches. Uh, Martin finding the Maga Sisters in the uh, in the dealer spot. Uh, won't be too bad if he's still got those mute knives hanging around for Edge. Uh, maybe. But... but he's also got palum to cast uh, nukes and quakes, so. Yep, and at some point that, um, oh, did not put those mute knives on. That's a really good call. I had completely forgotten that, um, he had them. And from all the bet, uh, apparently he forgot too. Um, those mute knives would definitely make some pretty quick work. We'll see if he decides to nuke and reflect. It's a good thing he didn't, because Tella is dead, and that would result in, uh, dictating someone to death in his own party. So, that's a really good call not doing that. Um, he'll get through this, but it's going to be a little bit slower than if he had put the mute knives on. Yeah, it also may be that Martin actually doesn't have them. I, I know Night Dew did, and I assume they ran across them in a similar location, but uh, we, it could be that he doesn't have them yet. Chris from chat, how, is the Alt Gauntlet still alive? Yes, we could see that Alt Gauntlet go, go, at Ogo Pogo for some evil mask action. But yeah, fun fact I watched, uh, I learned watching Inven uh, earlier today, is that the Thunder, that the evil mask is actually weak to Thunder, uh, and that Thunder Claw will do some work, so. Did our runners find that delightful little bit of fun? Um, uh, that's something that uh, they'll both be able to go ahead and utilize with Edge. Yeah, that's uh, very good to know. I wonder if it's uh, some kind of machine. It does kind of look like one. Put the Luca Key and the Twin Harp in the Ribbon Room. Uh, hoping oh. not have to run that Luca Key all the way down, I'm sure, but Twin Harp is one of our three that we need to leave. Yeah. You gotta be. You, ha you have to be tempted to leave if you're, if you're Martin. Because you have a required of Magnus, which is going to lead to something. You have Luca, which or which could lead to something. Yet you have Luca, which could lead to something. You have Pan, which could lead to something. You have to be incredibly tempted to leave, um, but he's not. He, uh, he yeah. knows that he's in good shape, and he knows that he can relatively quickly get through this entire moon. So he keeps on keeping on. I think if I'm Martin, I've got four objectives back on the blue planet. I've got three other bosses here that I can get to within easy reach. Maybe I fade the Mira altar. Uh, depending on what I get out of White Spear and uh, Masa. Well, uh, as uh, we Martin, learned, Martin, Martin wants to go back to Earth, finish his objectives, and then never come back because he's got that mass. Yeah. So speaking of the Mur Altar, uh, Night Dude's got the hook. So uh, got That's the Mom Bomb, and um, if Martin, uh, as we said earlier, if Martin decides to go ahead and bail early, that could be the path to victory. Um, uh, with the with the hindsight that we have, we now know that. Um, what will more than one, that's probably his last check. So we, we we know that a full clear of the moon for Martin is the way to go. Uh, just a water hag here at the White Spear Altar guarding just a cat claw. Uh, not not what he wanted to see, but uh, definitely Martin is probably continuing on down to the Masamune Bay Throne at this point or Altar. So this is the most root spot uh, outside of Zoromas, probably. Um, be interesting to see what they find here. Uh, Vanilla Ogo here is rude. The Gauntlet here is rude. Uh, Golbas here is annoying. Um, and the magic is pretty high. Um, we'll see what we get. Oh man, I forgot we hadn't seen Golbas. He's still around here somewhere to laugh at us, isn't he? Ah. Just some guards. They don't even have the boss bit. Palom potentially just going to turn them into statues right here and get through this fight. Even not center slot, you have to imagine that uh, Palm at his levels with the, with the Stardust Rod will have no problem doing this. He does. Uh, and that's that. 
which I imagine after this, we'll see Martin pop back up to the Crystal Throne floor, head over there and say, take that on. Glass hat? Yep, yep. Good, good call. Save scamming that. Don't even waste the time walking. Yep, I mean, this Crystal Sword Altar can be pretty punchy, but there's not a lot of... I don't think who's left that would really punch. Uh, we know where Mom Bomb is. Um, and that glass hat might actually come in a little bit of handy for that, but... Um, I, I, he's not, he, he has everything he needs. He's just okay. trying to get through all this. Uh, we haven't seen Bygen. Uh, we haven't seen the Turtle without Alice. Uh, evil Wall. I haven't seen an Evil Wall yet either. Oh, that's true. I have idea some, some punchy goodness. Well, um, uh, I do did remember his mutant knives, or the minimum has them. Yeah, let's get through Magus it's just pretty quickly. Martin finds Mylon Z. Or Mylon Z for Canadian friends. Um, not going to be too difficult here. Um, no, it, it's going to punch a little bit, but uh, yeah, barely. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, Martin handling it like he does most of the fights here. Uh, Berserk up this edge and then have Fallon put the boss in the microwave. Yeah, maybe a cure four here. Yeah, but this is uh, not going to last all that long here. You love to see a fight where Forum can actually contribute uh, damage. Yeah. So it's looking like the kind of the turning point of the seed here um, is really stealing those sirens. Um, you know, doing so as quickly as he did with the the, the cry strats, and then taking out uh, Tella and Forum or and Palum. He finds a little and summon that he'll probably save out of, or he won't. Despite me, it's fine. Um, but those uh, that decision to steal those uh, sirens really heads up and. Um, really is what's giving Martin his lead right now. Yeah, so here's our pivotal point. Martin has exited out. Does he go back in for the mural altar? I think he does. Uh, I, I, I he hope he does. I can't imagine that he Yeah, he's he's, cur he's curing up. That says going back in. And he's saving. Twice. Oh! Oh, but, oh no! Oh, oh no! Oh, well, he just did a save scum. So, um... So... Does he check? I mean, he'll probably check Pan first. I think he'll do yeah. everything but Cave Magnus because Cave Magnus is required. You, you can't save Scum out of that. I would be surprised if he does if he runs the Luka Key down. I think this is probably a Pan check because that's two freebies. I imagine he'll Bonk Yang, turn it into Sheila, and then reset back up if I'm guessing. But does he feel behind? Not. Well, no? Where's he going? Martin, where you going, buddy? Well, I mean, you can't say it's come out of this. Oh, Martin just doing Cave Magnus right now. Well, that opens the door for Night Dew. Uh, Night Dew is right back in this. Uh, that's enormous. Um, and not for nothing, with this life glitch, uh, Alan's about to get 300,000 XP or so from this fight, maybe a little less, assuming he lives. Um, that's, that's huge. That's really, really, really big. Yeah, I, uh, I did not mean to jinx Martin into avoiding the Maza altar, so... Uh, yeah, I can't, like, as you mentioned, can't save Scum out of this because it is a required objective and he's not going to sit through it twice, so... Uh, Martin really just hoping that there's absolutely nothing on that one moon altar he didn't check. Yeah, we got a race, folks. This is going to get, this is going to come down, down to the wire. Uh, on Night Dew's side, those uh, Mew Bells are doing some work. And Hallam can't quite stay alive, which means he's not going to get all this XP. That's really unfortunate for Night Dew. Oh, sorry, Hallam. But on the upside, we uh, we will get one of our uh, community favorites here. We uh, you know we, we we can't really randomize some aspects of this fight, but we can randomize the music that plays on Evan's harp uh, that helps our party stand up and fight against the Dark Elf. Uh, just a huge library of tunes from uh, uh, Rivers and Calamity and Xenocat. Uh, uh, just a huge variety here. You never know what you're going to get at the, at the uh, Cape Magnus check. But we're supposed now, to we're talk through the whole, we talk the whole time, right? Like the yeah, just, yeah, we just chatter right over and uh, scratch us. Right, 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 got it, got it, got it. 
Oh, he's got a newspaper out. I'm gonna behave now. <laughs> Enjoy music, y'all. Alright, got a little mountain music from Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. If there is one complimentary thing you can say about Mystic Quest, it's that the soundtrack did not have to go as hard as it did, but we are all glad that it did. It's a it's a fantastic soundtrack. Uh, it, it every every song in there slaps. It's wonderful. So well, uh, no no forward progress for Martin from Cape Magnus does, you know, check it. Got another objective on the board, but uh has to be wondering that's not you know that wasn't the adamant that wasn't the hook no uh that i mean the the adamant armor isn't really going to make that much of a difference at this point for any of the checks that are left uh inside of maybe z um but that rat tail has been just sitting in their pocket for basically the entire seed but that rat tail is the admin rock um martin's in some trouble um because they're probably going to check that rat tail before they check uh, the blue cave might do. Martin going to uh, test his luck here on uh, Young and Sheila. Uh, bad news there. And might do raising might do back on Earth, uh, raising a uh, raising the hovercraft and go turning those tail. This is so incredibly close. Um, if you are if you're Martin, I think you're you're really hoping that uh, Luca the uh, Luca Cave has the goods. We know that the pan doesn't. And I think that that puts him back in there, but. Man, this is a. Uh, whew. This is gonna get real, real tight yeah. real quick. There's a 50 50 chance here in Nightdew's favor, and it basically boils down to is this the tower key instead of the Adam and Rock? <laughs> yeah. Also, Nightdew still hasn't done Baron Basement. I don't know if that's gonna come into effect or not. Uh, but um, that's, that, that has to be in the back of his mind. Uh, but with all the checks that they have, it's probably not terribly likely that it's gonna really come to that. Yeah, with a full complement of uh, key items almost, and having cleared the moon, I, I that Rubicon might be the furthest thing from Night Dude's mind. Uh, dropping a safe, safe, yeah, safety save for, uh, for Martin outside of Sealed Cave. Um, uh, Rat Tail, a complete zonk. Uh, yeah, they don't even need the money at this point. I guess when Martin finds out that this rep, that this uh, pan turn in won't do anything, he'll go with a hard reset, and then we will get a a look at um, uh, Luca Cave. Meanwhile, Night Dew remembering that the Falcon needs to be launched, and so dropping off his hovercraft um, uh, by Evelyn Cave, so that when he goes back underground, that will more than likely be his path down there. Yep, Martin saves coming on that Sorcerer Road, going right back into Luca Cave. Uh, presumably this will then go through the tower key to the adamant rock, I believe. Uh, yeah, 
I'm trying to think if there are any other checks left. That pretty much has to be it, right? Yep, because we know Baron Basement's a no-go. Um, we've seen Keyless Tower, we've seen Dwarf, we've seen the entire Overworld. Uh, so we're looking at 17 out of 17. <laughs> uh, and on Martin's side, I believe, an eventual 28 out of 28. Uh, Martin. Oh, he takes the Chest of Shame. <laughs> Get some Medusa arrows. Shameful. Round of 16, and this dude's taking the Chest of Shame. Uh, you gotta love it. So he's a man of the people. He's a man of the people. Uh, well, Night Dew heading down for music, so uh, if you like uh, getting some Mystic Quest music, you're gonna get a second round of it here in a few minutes. That's true. In the meantime, you have to imagine what order Night Dew's gonna do his checks in. You know, he found Luka Kate Luka Kate on the moon. He made a decision to do the moon. At least he had to. But, you know, are you gonna check Luka before you check Baron Basement? Um, I don't know. This is a... Uh... If I if if I remember from the dusty depths of my memory, I believe key item locations have a slightly better chance of key items than summon, and so if you're looking at a 50 50 toss up between those two, I have to imagine Night Dew at least checks the big game. As Martin takes on his uh, evil wall spot boss, uh, we will be nice and quiet for uh, an encore performance of Mystic Quest. spot <laughs> and getting the tower key from Luke Cave, heading up to get what has to be the Adam of Rock, although he is really, really hoping it's the hook. <laughs> yep. Um, he has to forge. Um, it's a alt forge, so you're not going to find anything terribly, terribly, uh, horribly exciting. Although, I, 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 we were talking earlier, uh, I believe um, it's either a tier 7 or tier 8, so maybe there's a chance for an adamant, but if that doesn't at this point, see if it doesn't really mean all that much. Yeah, it's not it's not really exciting for uh, Martin's party, which is uh, already all powerful. And here's Blake. <laughs> Hello, Blake. And goodbye, Blake. Uh, let's see where Night Dew goes. This is going to be uh, uh, probably going back underground uh, via the hook route, um, and then probably straight to Luca. And that will we we know that that will put. Um, That'll put Night Dew into go mode. So I put Martin as a couple minutes behind here. Um, you know, he's gonna probably forge while he's down here. 
um, but then it's going to have to go back up, turn everything in, and then uh, launch the Falcon. Both runners, of course, have to pass, so they won't have to go back to the moon, in Martin's case, a third time, which is good. Um, but Night Dude is definitely ahead now. Yeah, Martin had caught up after doing that uh, after doing that grind, but now he's just got this awkward route. Like, the, the check is not going to take him long, he just has to go from the underground to the big whale to the moon to the altar to the big whale to earth to the hook it's it's just a lot of flying around uh, i believe that means that's ogopogo at the ruby spot which would normally be terrible um but for these party with these levels um i don't think it's gonna be that much of an issue um they might even be able to go ahead and combine some direct nukes with cure force um the, the direct spell cast, of course, re result in Blaze that takes out a quarter of the HP, but um, I think they'll be, they'll be just fine. Yeah, it's not, not a threat at these power levels. The uh, second form of the gate in the Emblem Cave, uh, that one gets to set this, gets to set this out. And uh, I do runs to go, uh, I do runs to go launch the Falcon while Martin, uh, Martin goes to Forge and then realizes he's going to have to go to the moon again. So if you're Martin, that doesn't, that doesn't feel great right now. That's, that's for sure. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be very, very tight. As we all know, these uh, these Z fights are not guaranteed. They can get a, a little bit spicy. Uh, both characters are certainly um, anchored, um, but uh, certainly nothing's guaranteed until this is over. This is not uh, a runaway by any stretch of the imagination. Yes, uh, and uh, thank you, Coco, for forging an Artemis arrow. <laughs> We're very proud of you. That would have been handy about an hour ago. Maybe not so much right now. Uh, a good, uh, good point being brought up in, in chat. Um, that uh, Zyrek uh, might do Baron Basement first. I think the fact that um, I do is going undergrounds right now. Ah, uh, oh, there's our laughing buddy. Um, I think he probably checks Luca. Um, since he's already going to be down there in the first place, but uh, it's possible, it's possible that he can go ahead and do Baron Basement. Or, uh... Yeah, this will this will consume some time, but then you remember that Martin has to do it too. He has to do it too eventually. Martin will get through his mom bomb pretty quickly. Um, I don't think that with Palm's HP. Uh, he's going to get knocked out by a single shot. Uh, plus, his power will have a nuke. So again, a, a big, big uh, theme of the seed is that you know, with the grind, Mark will be able to go ahead and get through his fights faster. So this mom bomb fight will be faster. Um, but at this point, um, none of the other fights will. I don't think that Martin's going to get through uh, the hook route any faster than than I do is. It's close. It's really, really, really close. Um, I'm at the edge of my seat with this one. Uh, we well, told you guys at the, be at the beginning of the top that we have two fantastic runners doing work, and it's exactly what we have here. Yeah, especially with our laughing buddy here, guaranteeing that the hook route takes a mandatory minimum amount of time from <laughs> listening to Galbez emote. Yeah, the magic there is crazy low, so there's no need to even hint at using a star veil. You just go ahead and kind of power through. This is, this is close. Yeah, this could, be, this could be very exciting. It could be getting into the Z fights pretty close, and that'd be very nice. It is Ogopogo waiting on the uh, ground. This would have been very rude if our runners had had to take this to get underground. Uh, yeah, especially with the lack of um, ability to grind early on. This would have been just horrendous. There's, there's no other word for it. <laughs> yeah, Galvez into Ogopogo would have been absolutely miserable. <laughs> I mean, gold is that spot isn't so bad, but it just it just would have been, you know, just just, just rude, you know, for lack of a better phrase. Uh, uh, Martin timing his nuke pretty well with the explode to go ahead and avoid the explode. Um, so this will take out Mom Bomb. This will put uh, Martin into go mode. Uh, so Martin is officially our first runner into go mode. Uh, at tower 41. We know that Night Dew will be doing Luca and then top of the tower. This is close. This yeah. is, I don't know. Yeah, they're they're doing kind of a reverse underground high five here. Night Dew, after finishing this, has to go down to the Luca Cave, uh, which you cannot exit back out of. And meanwhile, Martin has to go turn in the hook and then launch the Falcon and then make his way to Troya. 
We could still see them entering into the uh, entering into the Z fight pretty close together. Yeah, and looking uh, looking ahead to the Z fight, both runners did the treasury, which means that both runners have at least one silk web. Um, the edge advantage goes to Martin. It's Martin has those double muras, and I don't believe that Knight Do has either one of them. Um, both uh, both palms will have nuke. Both parties will be anchored, which means that everyone's going to be at RA one. Um, I don't know. It's this is uh, Martin's already launched the uh, Falcon, so, or the, excuse me, the, the hovercraft. So that's going to save a little bit of time. Um, he's going to turn in his mandatory pink tail, um, and then he's going to go do his hook route. Meanwhile, Knight Dew is launching his Falcon, and he's more than likely going to head straight to Luffy. Alright, well yeah, and on top of that, after going to Luca, does have to then go halfway up the tower to the tower key. Still has and to sit has in to the forge. same cannon. Has to forge, and then has to, and also has to sit through the multiple super cannon uh, cutscenes. It's not, it's not a hard check, but you've got the cutscene going into the room, you've got the cutscene leaving the room, you've got the cutscene leaving the tower. <laughs> this is really, really close. This is really, really, really close. Um, Martin might. Uh, I, I, I hesitate to call this for anybody at this point. No. Um, I think Martin gets through his Z fight ever so slightly faster um, because of the equipment that's on edge, and I think the, the levels are a little higher too. I'm not completely up on the uh, damage multipliers uh, for edge. Um, his, his edge is higher up. So uh, between the equipment and the higher levels, uh, there might be two different ways that the DPS might be a little bit higher. Um, both parties look are looking at the same fight. You're looking, you're looking at hybrid strats. Um, with Martin having a Tela anchor, you might be more likely to see his Porum do some whites as opposed to Tellas, because Tela can go ahead and probably heal up after the first big bang, assuming that he survives the nerf. I don't know. This is a really tight race with two just fantastic runners. Yep. So if you uh, if you uh, since we've seen both these checks, you can uh, you know can go and follow these runners on their own channels individually. In the meantime, uh, they are fantastic runners in their own right, not just when we have them restreaming here. So uh, check them out anytime. I mean, this is this is this is why we're watching this at you know over here in Jersey at uh, at midnight on a on a Tuesday night uh, because they're just putting on a show for us. Knight do finds his uh, his tower key. Um, realizes that the evil wall that he's going to have to do is required. Um, getting his party set. Meanwhile, Martin's going to find the hilarious news about who's at his king queen spot. Um, uh, we'll see if he saves. Um, doesn't need to, um, but you have to wonder because both runners need to be coming behind at this point. It's you know, you've had a, especially Martin. Uh, he's got you know fading the, the runner spot for as long as he did. It's going to feel a little rough. Um, yeah, I imagine both our runners probably are feeling behind at this point, assuming correctly that the other person has already done the check they're doing, uh, not realizing that that's basically the, the only difference between the two of them right now. <laughs> Martin making sure that he is slow anchored, which he is, finds the ever so good news. Uh, it's pretty low, uh, pretty low uh, MP for uh, Palom, which means that uh, getting off the nukes is going to be a little bit tricky. Um, especially if he's just virusing himself out of there. So his Ogo fight might take a little bit longer if he can't get a nuke off. Apparently we'll get that full heal though when he gets to the uh, two Oh, you're right. So. Yeah. Did, I, did I mention that it's midnight in Jersey? <laughs> hey, it's midnight here in Cincinnati too. I feel you. Hey. What up, neighbor? But uh, for races like this, I'll, I'll, I'll grow my sleep schedule. It's fantastic. Absolutely. So Night Dew is going to warp uh, floor by floor here, excruciatingly. Um, they, both runners must be feeling just the pinch of gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Everyone everyone knows what the path is. I do knows that the Adamant Rock is at Power Key. Um, you know, Martin's in full-blown go mode just trying to get through all of this. Um, it's, even it's, though, always, it's always such a pain getting out of sealed cave and you know it just has to be excruciating because that dude knows now I have to get out of here and I still have to go sit through tower key and I still have to go sit through forge 
and that's just seconds and minutes that Night Dude knows is mandatorily going to have to be wasted to get that last objective. Yeah. That, that's got to be... The nerves have to be something else. Yeah. Martin might be... Uh, Martin might get in here first, actually. Um, this... Uh, oh, he's just now putting on the adamant. That's interesting. Um, that would have saved a little bit of time with the gold dust fight. Cause it probably would have gotten held up there. Um, That's true. So, uh, as uh, I've seen Possum in chat, as he likes to say, uh, Ogo was weak to Berserk, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, meanwhile, Knight Dew furiously going up the tower to go ahead uh, and get his Advent Rock. Um, we've got a race. We've got a very, very tight race. I like to imagine that Edge is Naruto running up the tower as fast as he can. Edge strikes me as that kind of nerd. Edge, adamant Edge with that equipment hitting for a very angry 4,500 to 5,000 a pop. Um, that's gonna that's gonna be quite helpful when it comes to, uh, the, to that Z fight. Obviously, it'll be an Adam and Edge on Night Two side as well. But again, that double far out, it's not gonna have quite the the same kind of input or the same amount of uh, da uh, damage output. Yeah, he's, uh, he's putting out good numbers on Martin's side, so looking forward to seeing those, you know, those 3.4 3 to 5k swings in the Z fight. Balance and nukes hitting, like, train. Yep. Looking at the HP totals, uh, should they encounter an unnerfed Big Bang, I think it's uh, likely, depending on the rolls, that both twins would go ahead and survive. Um... You know, full, it, it, with full-blown reflect strats or with some of the earlier flags that we had in the group stage, you, you didn't always see a second Big Bang. I think a second Big Bang is likely, um, but nerfing might not necessarily be required. Um, but neither one of these Z fights are guaranteed. It's going to be uh, interesting to look for, you know, uh, when Z tips and gets an HP refill. There's a lot to look into here. Um, this is tight, man. This is really, really tight. Yeah, I think we're definitely about to see our first sea fight, though, because Martin can take this ship straight up to Teroya. I don't believe he has anything parked in that spot. Taking his full complement of 17 out of 17 key items and uh, gonna go fight the final boss. Probably puts Knight 2 around 90 seconds behind. Um, I don't think that uh, Martin's gonna need to go ahead and redo any of um, his characters at all. Um, you might want to maybe put Edge into the top slot and into the front row to Bacchus him quickly to start clocking up the queue. I think right now he has Alum up there. I can tell in the front row obviously doesn't kind of an easy fight. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of, uh, are we boring? I'm seeing a lot of, uh, these people sleeping in chat. Um, I don't know. What, what do we do? Put the people to sleep with these Z flags? Well, maybe they'll be excited to hear about, uh, randomized, uh, Zeromas. We uh we can't put Zeromas into other spots in the game because can you imagine just going to Bar going to Baron into and eating a big bang? Awful. So instead we uh Zeromas puts on a uh, a different cosplay for you, uh every time. A pool of over five hundred and fifty different looks for Zeromas, uh which leads us all to one important question we have to ask for the final boss here. John, would you like to ask it? I'd love to. Whose butt are we gonna kick tonight? And then we have the many follow-up questions of does it have a butt? How many butts? Is butt cute? Is butt up way past its bedtime. <laughs> and while we were talking about butts so much, uh, Martin put the adamant on Palum. Normally you see the adamant go on your melee character. I wonder if that's just a little bit of, of insurance in case the um, if, in case there isn't a nerf big bang to go ahead and keep him alive because Stardust Rod Palum at this level is pretty close to quad nining um, so that's definitely something I want to ask him when this race is over yeah Edge is probably going to throw a spoon maybe chip in a couple melee like hits before the HP tip and then probably just eat an under big bang at that uh, I think Palum and probably Poram are going to be carrying everything here for Martin do you think of full blown reflex strats here yeah, absolutely. I've uh, I've even seen uh, one runner recently just to ensure that that kind of thing works. Uh, shoutouts to Milo, who I first saw doing it. Uh, using Atella to weak your own melee character to guarantee they go down to the down. Oh, that's smart. That's the, I love that little bit of tech, things like that. 
Yeah, so let's see who's aromacist today. <laughs> I mean, shout outs to Scala Kitty for just dunking Zeromus into a big bowl of vanilla ice cream. <laughs> What's that in the middle? Uh, if I remember, it's like a sprig of mint or something. <laughs> <laughs> for your, uh, for your, your, your fresh, uh... Just to keep your breath fresh on your, your, your deliciously rendered vanilla ice cream. That's rough. That uh, that counter uh, counter nuke taken out Porum. Uh, not what you're looking for here. Can you get Porum up and get her back alive? Uh, for it's uh, even in their free thing, it's, it's gonna go ahead and do some some damage here. I'm gonna try to get a cure two up here or cure three walk on Porum. In the meantime, Knight Dew entering his fight. This nuke will put about. 30,000 worth of damage um, in. That Cure 3 going off is huge for Martin. Yeah, the, not exactly who you wanted the counter nuke to hit, but I think Martin is stabilizing here. Knight Dew entering the fight not that far behind him. We are, they are neck and neck here right up to the finish. They absolutely are. So with uh, with this white cast, uh, he's at about 29,000. We need to get to, I think it's 61. And the last shot can be direct. So that puts us at about 35, 36,000, and now we're at 46,000. So we definitely won't be seeing any attacks from at this point. It's the around 43. Yeah, at this point, it's all for the mages. Night Dew's going for hybrid strats as he's got a Bacchus on his edge, unless he's planning on co uh, coughing again at some point. Yeah, the damage output on that edge is just much lower there as we saw him swinging for 2800. Uh, not really what you want to see out of your edge if you're going to put a uh, Bacchus on him at this point. Uh, if there's a high roll, this nuke kills, or this white kills, rather, excuse me. Otherwise, um, uh, the next nuke from Palom definitely will. Uh, there was a bit of a shake there. I think we have one more spell to go. So, oh, that's it! There he goes! The GG's to Martin uh, Broadcloak, uh, winning at 1 hour, 54 minutes and 13 seconds, taking the first round in this round of 16 match against Night Dude. Um, we'll see if we are possibly going to get him done for an interview, and judging by that ding in my ear, we do! GG's to Martin! <laughs> one of these days one of these days <laughs> you know I've been in three races in brackets I'm 17 out of 17 all of them I've also won all of them so I guess I don't know maybe that's the thing just the life changing magic of picking up absolutely every key item in the game <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean you can't miss any, anything if you grab everything right I mean, you, you, how often have you called yourself a man of the people and you gave us so much content, buddy? I, I tried to. I, I did. So, yeah, that was definitely literally all the content in a seed. But, uh, yeah. Speaking yeah, that was of, a great uh, race, wasn't it? Yeah, speaking of content, tell us about that uh, the decision to leave the moon without doing the uh, mural. Yeah, the about that. So, you see, what happened was... Uh, <laughs> so I got the pan. And I'm like, all right... I'll go do the bottom. If I can find the hook plus one item, I'll leave. So I go to the bottom and I see the Luca and the Twin Heart. And it's like, oh, that's that's tempting. That's oof, that's delicious. But then I figured I'd never hear the end of it if Wyvern Alter had the hook. So I stayed down there and did the entire bottom didn't get anything and it's like you know what yeah fine i'll pull the trigger on you know luke and the twin heart what's the worst that could happen spoilers the worst happened so yeah yeah should have listened to myself the first time but i'm i'm great at doing that i mean it, it all it all worked out for you but it was uh it was definitely a little uh because um night dew did uh full top down so we start with the Burr Altar. So we uh, we over here um, got to sit and judge, and we knew 
Because um, mm. you, you um, a huge point of the match was your siren stealing um, mm -hmm. uh, with your form crying and uh, killing the other characters as well. You were you were fly. I've never seen the edge steal that quickly. Uh, you know, uh, and, and you were quote unquote behind, but because of your levels, you were catching up quickly. And you kind of you kind of zoomed right past Night Doom. Um, and, and we were kind of thinking that uh, this was kind of heading into a, a one-way battle here, <laughs> and you left. It was like, oh no, uh oh, we got a we got a match here, folks. Well, I'd I'd like to give all the credit in the world to a certain Pangrez for that one. Uh, that back in ye old days when we used to do campfire racing with them, uh, we developed a term called the Plinky Seal. And we basically watched him basically, you know, use an hourglass to freeze an eyeball, and the rate he could steal sirens was otherworldly. So, <laughs> I'm like, you know, I can't do that, but let me try for at least 80% of it and see if I can swing this. And it, uh, it, it worked out pretty well. 19 on the mark was hilarious. Um, thought about burning more than those initial two, but I just wanted to get the party up and running. And then when uh, the the march presented itself as, okay, well, it's either in the march or it's that ruby down in the basement. It's like, okay, well, I might need a few more levels to play with, you know, what's in the march. So I figured I'd just go until uh, Palum's MP ran out. And then after that, just go and whatever happens, happens. Yeah, those, uh, those sirens and then also... Um... So it's interesting because of those sirens, you also managed to squeeze in an extra check that Night Dew never did, which is the basement throne. Mm -hmm. um, and Night Dew also skipped the first check for Flame Dog, so his edge was also considerably less well armed. And it was interesting to see how the power of two good swords and several levels, and the ability to come from what seemed like behind to pulling ahead, and then me and John on the edge of our seats, you guys are doing opposite checks to try <laughs> to, you're going to the moon and, and Night Dew's sitting through the, the Luca Cave trek to the tower, to the Adamant Forge, mm. to... <laughs> yeah, no, we, yeah, they went everywhere, sometimes twice, sometimes three times, you know, eh. um, that second Mura, though, that was, that was more of an annoyance on my part, because that treasury was crap. And I'm like, you know, I I know it's 28 seconds to walk it out. I don't care. I'm keeping the sword. <laughs> so I walked out the second Mura. What yeah. what were you hoping for from the treasury, given that it's too Anything pro? functionally better than a long sword. Well, or maybe I don't know, a sorcerer robe would have been nice. You know, so, so, something useful to the party. Not three protect rings and three protect rings even though they did come in handy but and yeah. stardust rod it was kind of mages out of 10 oh yeah oh you mean the one i didn't equip for like 40 minutes yeah don't worry about that. That's <laughs> he did just fine with a charm rod eh. well um any other uh thoughts on the seed uh it was uh when, when you watch it back i think you're going to see quite a bit of divergence and then uh the linear nature of the seed just kind of brought you two together it was a really wonderful match it really was uh, y'all mm -hmm. put on uh, quite a show i'm i'm definitely looking forward to watching obviously you know night Dew was part of the early campfire running too and you know we used to go at it quite a bit so i i knew we were going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of possibly evenly matched so i'm not surprised the result was this close um Obviously, th thank you, John. Thank you, Stoppable. Grunt, you and me, we have words later. <laughs> thank you, Sheep, for tracking. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the second race, which, yay, is in 22 hours. Fantastic. I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this will be pretty exciting. You guys both came out of your uh, round of 32, 2 0 your first opponent. So mm -hmm. we knew this was going to be a slugfest going in, and uh, you guys did great. I don't think I have any more questions. How about you, John? No, I'm great. Uh, thank you for uh, putting on the show for us tonight. We appreciate it. Yeah, not you. a problem. Looking forward to seeing you again. Take care, everyone. Good night. Good night. And I believe that we are joined with Night Dew. GG's, my friend. Thank you very much. How are you feeling about the seed? Uh, I mean, nothing wrong with the seed uh, aside, from, uh, <laughs> aside from a little bit of... Uh, 
a little bit of free race. I won't want to say free race jitters, but um, uh, definitely in uh, something we went through in the uh, after chat there. Um, besides this cat trying to get up here. Um, and uh, that pan check that I'm like, okay, let's just go scum this. And like halfway through taking it back to Sheila, I'm like, um, well, you know, did I save? And uh, that, and I, I listened a little bit to that previous interview, the same thing with Martin. It's like, man, that ribbon room was uh, very, very tempting to uh, dive out on. Um, and I kind of wish I had, but um, it is what it is on that one there. I mean, you had done full top down, so you had the hook. Um, it's, it's so, you know, we've seen, how many times have we seen 17 out of 17 and 28 out of 28 on these flags? It's, you know, I mean, there's a, when you watch this back, you're going to find a lot of divergence uh, between you two. Um, and then, uh, as, I was, as I was saying to Martin, you know, like the, just to get uh, onto the moon, I mean, there, there was only so many options that you all had left. Um, like, no one really wants to do the Fame March that early, especially without a, a very easy way to go ahead and grind. Um, but, you know, you don't want to leave anything on the moon. I mean, you just don't. Um, so it's tempting to leave. And sometimes rando is just going to random. Yeah, and again, kind of listening to that, I had a, I had a strong suspicion, and I had almost done it myself of the uh, of the siren theft. I'm just kind of thinking, away, man, I have, I have a good anchor. Edge is okay. You know, I wish I had found some of that steel. I completely missed there, but uh, yeah, that's just rando there. But um, you know, you know, at that point, I had just taken a fresh Rosa, and I'm thinking, well, you know, we can kind of squeeze through this. I mean, the Mom Bomb, you know, if I get some Blinks up, that's fine. Dark Elf, all we have to do is get to Phase 2, and we're fine. So I'm thinking, okay, well, we'll we'll make it. Um, I wish, you know, kind of made it faster there. And, you know, of course, uh, even the Baron Guards couldn't play nice. I was out of Hourglasses, through one coffin, and they decided to knock Palom down before he could uh, pick up Nuke Level, so I didn't have to use that last Siren. But, uh... And also, what, a five-minute hunt for life potions because Blarg ate them all? Yeah, um, Martin had uh, just checked that that shop at Agar. We were talking about quite a bit, just you know how it had a lot of the goodies between Star Bales, Life Pots, and uh, Cabins. Like, that was a really, you know, they kind of put everything all into one item shop, which was uh, a little unfortunate. Uh, but again, that's just random gun to random. Yeah, that's... Uh... I, I mean, I get it, and I would, you know, if I see him, I, I'm definitely kind of a little light on the shop checks. And I, I will say, uh, like, even practice seeds in here, you know, maybe I'd be a little bit more conscientious about hitting those because usually I'm running up, you know, between glitching and there. You know, if you start with 15, you're all right. If you start with 10, it's a little dicey, especially when you have a boss that can just eat most of them in one go. There's there's a million decisions that you have to make on the fly, and it's just a matter of making the best decision you can with the time that you have, or with the situation that's in front of you. You know, it's real easy. Um, you know, you talk about maybe some race jitters. I mean, race brain is a very real thing. Uh, it's real easy when we're all just kind of sitting here watching both streams at the same time. Like, oh yeah, just go to that item shop. It's fine, duh. <laughs> you know, but when you're in the when you're in the thick of it, it's it's you know how much shopping do you really want to do? Do you want to spend time going through? You know, it's it's. It, it, nothing, nothing that you did um, was. Can anyone point to and be like, "Oh, that was a ridiculous play"? It, everything was legitimate. You know, when you, you are in the final sixteen, and that's what we're going to see in these seeds, where everyone's going to make very legitimate, perfectly reasonable choices, and sometimes it's just going to go one way or the other. Yep, and uh, again, that kind of speaks to my opponent. We've ran a ton of stuff very close together, so uh, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of just kind of an echo chamber on most of the stuff he said. I mean, this is. You know, I'm walking up the Zoromus fight. I don't see a dot done right now. I'm expecting it at any point because I'm 27 out of 28. We don't talk about the Baron Basement. Uh, <laughs> really, we don't right now. But um, <laughs> um, I, I had thought to go there, but I went to Baron like really early. So I'm like, ah, I'll go check it. But I got all this other stuff to do. And oh, wait, that was Magma Key too. So yeah, that, that was a quick dive underground. I'll come back to it later. Um, spoilers, he did not. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's just it's it's kind of the small things, and um, yeah, we'll uh, get back to it tomorrow, and uh, hopefully we can tie this thing up here. Absolutely. Well, um, say game one was a thriller, and I'm absolutely looking forward to game two of this. Much so. Um, but yeah, we'll see you in uh, 
uh, yeah, less than 24 hours. Yeah. Well, you all put on a show tonight, and I'm sure that you will tomorrow. I don't know if you, uh, do you know if you're being restreamed tomorrow? I do not know. Let me go check, actually. Uh, nope. nope, no, we are not. Okay. Nope, but we will have, uh, in the Discord that we mentioned earlier, we will have a, uh, a Cadgar link where you can just pop up in both their streams and watch them separately on your own. That'll be fun to watch, too. Yep. Thanks for everything, everybody. Well, GG's a uh, wonderful race tonight, and I'm sure you, uh, you both will do it again tomorrow. Indeed. Have a wonderful so, night. I was gonna say, so speaking of tomorrow's matches, uh, we do have, it looks like, four matches restreamed tomorrow, six total played. At uh, all these times during Eastern, at 2 p.m., we have uh, Blue Cat Loach versus Curios on Free Enterprise. Uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern, we have Pancras versus Dusty Griff on RPG Limit Break. Uh, 9 p.m., we're looking at Possum Orpheus versus Infinius on the flagship Free Enterprise channel. And uh, at 10 p.m., we will have Gale Swift versus Simbu match two here on Free Enterprise 2. Uh, we also have two unrestreamed matches tomorrow, Wu Bear vs. Zyrak at 9pm and Martin vs. Night Dew at 10pm. So, uh, full slate tomorrow as well. And those are amazing matches all the way around, so uh, you all have to pick up the litter on watching some wonderful free enterprise. Well, with that, I believe we're done here. Um, John, it's been a pleasure doing commentary with you. Uh, Stop on. Yep, Grunt and um, and uh, Sheep Launcher, fantastic behind the scenes work as always. Uh, yep, uh, y'all doing the hard work so that uh, we can just go ahead and hear and talk. I do believe that we are headed to my Artemis Mo brethren, uh, Blue Cat Loach, uh, doing some uh, Adam and Cut practice. And probably bracket flags, probably brushed up for tomorrow. Do, uh, remember, do not spoil the outcome of this match, or uh, you will be assaulted with newspapers. <laughs> and they will hurt. All right. I uh, hope you all have a wonderful night. Thank you for watching with us, and I hope that you watch some more of these races tomorrow as this exciting tournament continues to pick up steam. Have a great evening, everybody.